Okay, we are good to go. All right, thank you. Uh, call to order the Tuesday, December 1st, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, Joe, would you please call the attendance? Okay. Um, Rich Roberts is here. Ryan Allard. Yep, here. Joe Hammer is here. Jim Hughes. George Oikel. Tom Dean. Here. Tony Homicki. Dave Edwards. Here. Michael Vieira. Here. David Drake. Here. Yolanda Antoniak. She's here. George, George has uh, joined us now. Okay. Hi, George. All right, so I think that takes us up to nine. Um, both of the alternates will be seated for tonight. Um, primarily, we have three public hearings tonight, and I know most of you have probably been involved in public hearings that we have at one time or another. Um, but generally how they'll go is the applicant goes first. Uh, members of the commission may have some questions for the applicant. There'll be some back and forth. Once that's done, we will open it up to members of the public who wish to speak on the application, uh, either in favor, against, or with questions. Um, depending on how much commentary there is and whether there are any open issues, uh, we may decide to continue the hearing if the commission believes that uh, it's received enough information to adequately evaluate the application. Um, we would move to close the hearing, then into, go into deliberations on the application. Um, and uh, that would all be done here at this meeting, but once the hearing is closed, there's no more public input from either the applicant, their representatives, or members of the general public. Um, on the first item, public hearing application 2059-20-Z, Eleknor Hawkeye LLC, seeking a special permit in accordance with 52H of the Weathersfield zoning regulations for a contractor's storage yard uh, at 61 Arrow Road. That hearing is continued from our November 17th meeting. And we'll pick up where we left off. I guess there is one thing that I, I would like to say that I think is very important, particularly for commission members, is that we should limit our discussion, commentary, evaluation, uh, insights to the application before us and not relitigate literally or figuratively um, things that may have occurred in the past uh, with respect to the property. Um, it's just not fair to the property owner. It's not fair to the applicant. So, um, you know, while there is a history there, we leave it in the history and focus on what it is that they are proposing to do right now um, what the condition of the site is right now and the uh, compliance of that application with our special permit requirements. So um, I think we should try to remain on that track during the, during the process this evening. So with that, um, I will ask the applicant if he has had any further conversations or additional information since our last meeting. Uh, there were a variety of kind of open issues and concerns that had been raised. And uh, at this point, I'll ask the applicant to identify himself by name and address for the record and present uh, anything that he chooses to. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, this is Dan D. Dominicus, 76 Lords Hill Road is my, my current address. Um, a few things I'd like to add. Um, I did send over to the commission some some photos. Of, I know last time I had a drawing with some markouts on it for you guys, and I went a couple photos, aerial photographs, so you can kind of get a better visual of uh, what's there now. That current day, there was only one truck in the lot, but um, kind of helps. 
visually show exactly what's laid out in the yard. And I, I did also meet with uh, Peter and the engineer out on site, which I know those um, are attached to this um, application as well. And because uh, one of the things that came up last week was about paving the lot. And, uh, we agree, or the engineer had also agreed to leave the lot as it, as it sits. And uh, um, we'll, we'll, he wanted to include a drainage ditch around the perimeter fencing, which we have no problem working with and doing that and installing that um, to help better better drain the, the site the way it is, but as leaving it as gravel. Um, one of the other issues I know or was a concern was the, the porta potties being visible and moving the porta potties. And uh, we talked to the property superintendent and we were gonna be moving them down away from the road, but also we can put a stockade fence around them to better match their view um, for the public passing by as well. And uh, one of the major things we'll be doing to help with another visual appeal is moving the bucket trucks. And I did include that in one of the pictures. Right now, that day I took the pictures is where our, our employees park, um, but we'll be moving larger vehicles to that side of the lot to help. And from there, it would be a lot less of a visual from the crossings area and the main road as well, backed into the back side of the fence um, and moving around uh, the other equipment as well to get it to the other side of our, our property, the west side, that would be. But outside of that, um, that's what I'll, I'll, I'll add this evening. Okay. Um, Peter, did you, um, I think I thought I saw Derek was on here as well. Uh, do either you or Derek have any further observations or uh, information for the commission? So in your packet, you did receive um, a copy of an email from Derek dated November 25th. Um, he did join me uh, on the site visit um, specifically so that we could discuss um, whether the property needed uh, pavement added and whether there would be drainage related to that. So um, uh, as you are aware, and as we've discussed at previous meetings, um, he is attempting um, to comply with some state requirements to um, minimize the amount of uh, surface area within the community that is paved um, in terms of pervious and impervious coverage. So he has an email basically suggesting as it relates to that and based on the site conditions, he would uh, prefer that the site remain gravel as it exists today um, with a, a, just a recommendation that they, the applicant construct a shallow level trench along the entire length of the new fence uh, on the east side uh, that is at least five feet wide and a foot and a half deep to contain the water quality volume on site and promote infiltration. Um, and he's asking that it uh, be topsoiled and seeded um, for stabilization. So uh, that was his specific recommendation on the issue that was raised the last time around about paving the lot. Uh, I do have a memo also uh, that I prepared dated November 25th, which basically summarized uh, the site meeting and the uh, issues uh, that were uh, discussed on site um, and then referenced the uh, additional attachments submitted by the, uh, the applicant. So uh, if you have any questions, you can refer to both of those, um, both of those pieces of correspondence in the file. Okay, thanks. I see the, um the list of items that you have in your November 25th memo. Um, the applicant talked about a couple of them, but a number of them seem to be still be open. Is that correct or did I miss something? I, I would probably let the applicant, I'll let Dan you know, respond. Uh, we did discuss uh, each of these issues out on the site um, with the intention you know, of going over those with you tonight. So. I would defer to Dan maybe to speak to those. Dan, I believe you did get uh, a copy of my um, November 25th memo. So maybe you want to go through um, those items that we discussed. Yes, correct. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. I, uh, I missed that earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah, so the toilets, I went over the toilets, um, less visible with the fence around the toilets. Um, the detailed plan, I, I looked at that as those, those uh, aerial photos that I submitted. Um, 
kind of tell the exact story of where everything is and propose where we move the trucks. Um, the generator, I mean, when we were on site, the generator was running and we could barely hear it. Um, and that is supposed to be removed anyways, uh, moving forward, if this falls together correctly. Um, and the relocation of the, the trailers, um, that would be the large equipment trailer that looks like a tractor trailer trailer. Um, that would also be moved. I did not mark that on that picture, um, but we plan to move that to the west side of the fence and then and replace that larger pole pile in the picture over to where the tractor trailer um, material trailer is. Um, And then uh, as far as nighttime lighting, we don't have any lights um, pertaining to the site. I, I know there might be some parking lot lights to the building, but we physically don't have any lights erected um, in our in our lot. And I think maybe, because uh, I know a few um, homeowners of the crossings had mentioned the, the lighting issue at night, and I, I'm talking to the, the guys sometimes they come home at night maybe from my understanding it's the headlights shining past the fence into the houses when we pull in with the bucket trucks um and we could always add a, a taller buffer to that fence if that is the case um, but we do not have any overhead lighting um illuminating the site and uh and then the, the other thing was the biggest thing i guess was the bucket truck arms so i spoke with the foreman and the guys on site um and we're going to work to, uh, we, we rolled out a plan to have the guys keep, we have to keep them up off the, the deck of the truck, but we can, we can lower them down as low as we can, but as high as we can at the same time to keep that um, the visibility from seeing it um, from the crossings. And it, with the addition of moving the trucks to the other side of the lot, it will definitely aid in a less visual appeal truck sitting there in that lot. Okay. Can I interrupt with a quick question on the bucket stuff? Um, does that rule where you have to keep it elevated? I mean, I'm assuming it's because you don't want anybody like jumping in it and doing anything. Um, but is that, does that rule still apply when you close that fence up and lock it up at night or do you lock it up at night? Uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It, it, I guess it depends on the day, but most of it is because there's tools, there's tooling that stays in the bucket overnight. And, okay. uh, and that was, it was a safety concern of one, people climbing in and out and two, either the stolen or damage of the tools or the uh, trying to operate the tools as well that are sitting in the bucket. But we're okay. going to work, keep them as, as high enough where you can't climb in it from the truck, which would definitely considerably be lower than what it is right now. Thank you. One of the things that we had, or at least I had asked about last time was what the maximum number of trucks, bucket trucks on site would be at any one time. Um, as far, I mean, we can, we could limit if, if you wanted a limit. I know what we need to have to that crew to operate is, is six or seven trucks at a time. Um, and like I said, the only reason others would be in that is if there's outside work in the area, but if you would like to limit the amount, um, we can certainly have a, a max amount of vehicles that would go in there. Um, but we do need six, seven or eight vehicles, larger trucks um, to operate out of that yard. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess my concern was having it completely open-ended. I mean, if, if you have six, seven or eight and the limit is 10, that's different from 30. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. And that, that's, that's understand that that's, if that's um, what this comes to be or, but that's fine. If we have a limit of 10 trucks, we could say 10 trucks would be our max that, that um, we're able to work with that. No problem. Okay. Anyone else on the commission have any questions for the applicant? Um, what about the screening that was noted in the uh, conversation? with uh with peter and 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 derek was there any talk about um additional screening on the property uh yes as, as far as um visual screening is in fencing is that what you or any type of visual aid to block yeah like a visual aid yep it could yeah. be either yeah so we uh 
similar to about the the lighting issue um, along the I guess you would call it the north side that faced that abuts directly to the crossings. Um, we, we could erect a little bit taller fence that above, that is higher than the headlight line of the vehicles um, when they approach in, which would definitely hit, help in not being able to see lights or the lights going into the windows of the homeowner across the way. One of the other items on was management plan. Richard Lagan. Yeah, Richard, to let your delay in early morning hours to minimize the backup. Yeah, so with no, um, number eight. Yes, uh, uh, with us moving the, the vehicles, they'll be backed in in the evening against that fence, which come morning, all we would have to do is pull out and there would be no no type of noise from the vehicles. Or in the back of the line. So at the end of the day, it'll have to be evening or morning, no matter what, but I, I'm, I'm sure everyone could agree that having it eight o'clock them back up for 15 minutes would be much better then 6 a.m. in the morning, um, some people might still be sleeping. Okay, I hope somebody else heard that while I was gone. <laughs> Does anyone else on the commission have any questions for the applicant? George? No, you're muted, George. I'm muted. Now I'm muted. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, the height of the fence bothered me when I was over there looking recently. And, uh, and only at the height of the buckets. Now, if you can lower those buckets slightly, all of them, that's uh, all that's needed to prevent it uh, being an issue with the condos. And uh, and you said, I think you're gonna to try to do that. Is that correct, Dan? Yeah, that's correct. Yep, we'll be able to lower them as, as low as we can while still being, okay. which is most like it, it's realistically half, if not more than half of what they have seen. Okay. And another thing, in keeping with the town engineer's recommendation, not to, we suggested paving, and I agree with not paving it, but if you could smooth out the lot and put a little more gravel in, I mean, I think it would help a bit as long as it's a, it's, it's a nicer looking lot that way. And uh, I think that was an issue when I was over there, but uh, um, the, uh, I thought I saw it. Explain this to me, please. Um, the uh, there's trash outside the fence. Now they say that's the state's outside your outer fence toward the uh, Russell Road, right? Um, is that do you keep that or pick it up once in a while, I and mean, once a year or something out there? The I mean, it wouldn't be our trash, but the you're, you're referring to what's between the Russell Road and our fence. In the right? fence, yeah, the black fence, yeah. Yes, um, that that could be arranged. I I, I mean, our trash would all be in the dumpster, but if that is um, or if that was there from before us, or if that's just from from the uh, people or just from whatever. Right, Peter, okay. what, what do you say about that? Um. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to say who's the generator of that trash, but um, obviously if it's along the front of the property, it would be the property owner's, you know, responsibility to at least try and maintain and pick that up, so. That could be a condition then, Peter, if we wanted it. I don't know it should be a condition on this applicant, but um, if you want to make a note for the record, we can pass that on to the um, Russell Road Properties LLC. Um, Okay, I like that. Okay, uh, what what about the trash container? There's a big trash container in the site. Is that? It's a black one. Is that? Uh, 
Are going to be fenced, uh, Dan, or not? Or, or don't you think it's needed or what? Uh, in, in, I mean, we have, yes, our dumpster that's inside our fence now, um, uh, is, we would think that would be sufficient enough inside our already fenced area. Um, outside of, you're talking about seeing it inside, inside yeah, just fence? inside your fence, yeah. Just inside on the right, I think it is, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You'd like to fence it. That, that's in pretty good shape. It's new. It looks new. Yes, painted. Right. Yeah, that, that's you on that? Is that an issue at all? Because I know you get concerned about containers or trash containers. That happens to be an extra big one. Yeah, I believe it's a it's a 30 yard container. That would be for like our aluminum wire and, and oh yeah, you, you have a lot of equipment that's uh yeah would be required to go in something like that. Yeah. Peter, is that an issue at all? No, I think since it's inside the yard and behind the fence and the fence gets probably all right. Locked, yeah, I think it's it's fine. And we were we were it's more concerned good, about it's in good shape too, Peter. So yeah, it, it's inside the area, so we don't okay. That's all for me, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Drew. Uh, anyone else on the commission have questions for the applicant? Going once. Um, if not, I'll open it up to members of the public uh, who wish to speak on this application. You take turns and unmute yourselves, Mary. I'm Mary Rum. I live at 10 Tanner Crossing. I'd like to know why you're considering waiving the requirement for a paved lot since that's been a condition of approval for any prior application. What's the change between now and then? It's, it's a mess in there. Um, I drove by yesterday. We're talking about drainage. You're, you're talking about drainage and trying to address that and just the look of the lot. Um, Water actually does drain into that lot. The nearest storm drains are at the corner of Russell Road and Arrow Road and at Tinsmith. So along the entire length of the property, there are no storm drains on Russell Road. The water yesterday was raining really badly. And when I came home, I looked carefully to see what was happening out there. It drains right down into the lot. So I, I, I'm just curious, you know, why is there no requirement for him to pave it and assure some kind of drainage and prior requirements had lighting and landscaping in the lot? What's the difference? Would other businesses in town not be able to use gravel lots now instead of paved? I'm a little confused, I guess, by the change between the last meeting and this one. Yeah, I'll let I'll let Peter amplify, but I, I think basically there there has in fact been a change in either state law or state application of federal law with respect to um, storm drainage and impervious surfaces and things like that. Um, where the town now has um, basically a mandate to have less paved impervious surfaces than, um, you know, than would otherwise be the case in order to, um, you know, minimize or reduce the amount of storm drainage runoff that gets put into the combined um, sanitary storm sewer overflows and you know, goes to Long Island Sound. It, it's essentially a um, EPA requirement that is being interpreted by uh, DEEP and imposed on towns that have to comply with these changes in the regulations. And the uh, current town engineer is um, being, I won't say aggressive, but he, he's being more careful about making sure that where there is an opportunity to have impervious ground cover that we take advantage of it. I don't know, Peter, is there more to it than that? No, I think you, um, you've covered it uh, adequ adequately. The commission did ask the town engineer to um, inspect the site and make some recommendations and his recommendations were to keep it gravel, um, construct some trenching to get the uh, stormwater that you mentioned uh, back into the ground through infiltration trenches rather than 
pave it and then have to put catch basins and drainage and then um, have it go off site somewhere and affect somebody downstream. So um, it is something we look at in all cases and um, the commission makes a decision on a case by case basis. So then the Popeye's drive-through could have a gravel lot. A um, little different. But it's not apples to apples, but on a case by case basis, they could have asked for that, but obviously they've got drive throughs and parking lots with the public coming and going. So not a, not a fair um, comparison. This feels like rewarding a long history of, of bad behavior on the part of the owner who has previously agree, disagreed with paving the lot and in fact drew a hard line on paving the lot in the past. So it's like, it's, it's a gimme for him. I, I, don't see, I really don't see what's changed. The lot looks nasty. Yesterday when I drove by it, there was standing water in it. There are large potholes in it. The gate's wide open. We can see everything that's in there. We can see the, the inside of the lot from the road, basically. They can raise the fence height on the, on the northern side closer to the crossings, but we'll still see it as we drive by. And it's the only way we have into and out of our neighborhood which makes, it, and it abuts us directly. It sort of makes it the de facto welcome mat to the crossings. So it really should be looking a little bit nicer than it is now. I don't have a problem with Eleanor Hawkeye. I think if, if as you said, they park, you know, back vehicles in and move like that gigantic trailer you can see from a mile away to the back of the lot and, and the same thing with their trucks where we can't see them so much. I'm not anti-business, that's fine with me, but you also, probably want to think about um, putting a limit on the amount of, of stuff that can be put in that lot or the number of vehicles because they won't be there forever and they may wind up being a good neighbor, but the owner of the property hasn't been a good neighbor historically. And how do we know what's going to wind up in there next? Is it going to be a whole bunch of earth moving equipment or gigantic tra like tractor trailers? Or I'm just concerned about where this goes from here if there's not some kind of I don't know if you can't rein this in somehow. No, I we have to live you. here. You guys don't, you know? No, I know, but, you know, I, I hope you understand that we are taking your concerns seriously. I mean, we've, we've had to deal with things for a while. Um, when, when a special permit is issued, it's generally pretty closely tied to the application. So, um, you know, if, if, if this tenant were to leave, someone else coming in would have to go through some kind of process similar to this, um, you know, if it was doing anything different um, or had different types of equipment. Okay, so Eleanor Hawkeye moved in there and they were there for a while before they ever wound up in front of this commission. So what's to stop the owner from renting the lot to someone else? And he has, I know you can't talk about the history, but I can. He has a long history of doing exactly that. And then when someone catches up with it, the tenant winds up in front of this committee trying to get a special permit or, or get a waiver for having the lot paved. It, it just... I can't get past this feeling like you're rewarding bad behavior. Well, I, I don't really make sure I'm, I am not um, muted. I don't really um, see it as, as rewarding bad behavior. I think I wasn't at the last meeting, but based on the, the information I have and, and the report of meeting from, from two weeks ago, it looks like like the commission and, and, and the town planner and the town engineer listened to people's concerns in the neighborhood. And it's well documented what those concerns are. And that's why the, the very next day, the uh, Peter um, reached out to have a meeting with, with Dan, I think it was out in the field. And so th the three of them went over the concerns and that's documents. And that's what we were talking about earlier in the meeting. So, so we were just trying to make sure that he is going to adhere to the discussions and those, those conditions, I'll call them. And with respect to the second point you made, which is what's the difference with, with Popeye's property, uh, you know, over by Jordan Lane and this one, how come that one's going to be paved and this one's not? That's a different, 
that's a different type of application. And, and right now, currently, the lot that we're talking about isn't paved. It's gravel. So it's impervious. If you pave it, that just creates more runoff. And as, as both, um, you know, as both gentlemen mentioned, that just creates, uh, there's more regulation. In the case of, of the Popeye property that we'll be talking about later, that's, that's existing pavement. And they're actually reducing the amount of pavement in that. So that's not, that's not apples and apples. So and I just wanted to clarify that. I don't know if that helped clarify things, but, but that's just how I, how I see this application. I respect that. It, it's it's just that this lot was supposed to be paved for previous applications that came through, and now suddenly it doesn't have to be paved, and that's where that's where I get stuck a little. It does look nasty from the road. If there's some way that you can ensure, I don't know whether it's sending the ZO out on a regular basis or whatever, that the lot looks good. Maybe that they close the gate to the street so we don't have to look at it so much when they're not actively using the lot. Just, just something to make it a little bit more visually appealing. I realize there's like a limit to what you can do here and I, I'm not trying to, to squash this guy's business. Everybody's got to make some money, but we have to live here and I don't want it to hurt our property. I understand, yep. I think the, the gravel- I appreciate that, thank you. I think the gravel that's being put out there is like it, it's you guys um if anybody if anybody wants to speak to this feel free like it, it looks like you're just spreading gravel out on top of the bare soil and maintaining it and putting new gravel out every time a rut forms as opposed to hogging out any of that material actually putting down like a decent sub base especially in the heavily traveled areas like the entry and the exit so you know, I think there's for sure room to improve the gravel and still maintain the, the pervious nature of, of the area. So um, I think if we're going to talk about something later on in the meeting, we should at least set some sort of guidelines or have the engineer be able to review what is being installed um, in this pervious area. Oh, thanks. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to speak on this application? Joan? Uh, yes, I would. Um, well, my, my, name is to beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Lynn Burdick. I'm at 58 Tinsmith Crossing. Um, I guess I would reiterate, and I won't repeat everything, but I, I agree with what Mary said. Um, and I, I appreciate you going out and doing the investigation and coming up with some suggestions. I like the idea of moving the trucks further, lowering, um, you know, the the section above, you know, the um, dump. I forgot what you called it, but the, you know, lowering the um, Bucket. buckets. Thank you, um, and moving them. But um, I wonder if there's a way that, um, and I, I think and hope that these are going to be great neighbors for us. Um, but if in fact they do leave, is there a way that you can put a stipulation in that before he rents it to somebody else, um, they're not there for six months and then we have to go through this all over again, but that you could make sure that the owner um, comes to the Planning and Zoning Commission first before they actually sign a lease? Is that a stipulation that you can share with him? We can talk about that, you know, put it on the list of things to discuss. Mm -hmm. Because I've been on, on some of these meetings and, you know, there's been two or three um, folks that he's rented to, one or two were okay and a couple of them didn't, didn't meet the um, requirements. So it seems a shame to have not only us have to go through this, but to have the people that want to rent it find out that they can't utilize that for what they were thinking of doing. And I, I think in fairness to both us as well as new customers for him that, you know, he abides by that. So 
So I guess that's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joan, try again. You're mute. Still muted. Unmuted. Okay. There no, you go. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I had this uh, this little thing I was going to read, but um, a couple of things came up. So um, I'll only read part of it. I just, um, my name is Joan Slaverio. I live at 62 Tinsmith Crossing, and um, I've lived at the crossing since 1984. And when I moved in, the property at 61 Arrow Road was Arrow Manufacturing. And, you know, I didn't have any issues with that. Um, but um, I thought a storage facility would also be fine. But instead, um, some liberties have been taken with the property. And um, like there was someone living in one of the storage units and so forth and so on, who has since moved out. But anyway, um, I, I don't think that the commission actually intended for people to be living in these storage units. My point is just that sometimes... Um, that the commission, you know, grants the owner of this facility a special permit and the results go often beyond what has been granted. And, you know, that's, that's one of my concerns. Um, you know, we're a community of 172 homeowners and, you know, we probably pay as much in taxes as, as the storage facility and its tenants. And, you know, um, I just wanna make sure that we're heard. So having, having made those few brief remarks there, um, I just wanna say that there were um, you know, during the, um, the storm, there were, um, not only was the lot pretty full with, with bucket trucks, but they were also, um, the Cedar Hill, uh, Cedar Crest Hospital, um, property there as well. So they went, you know, there were a lot of bucket trucks, not that I minded them being there because I knew that it meant that we would get our electricity back, um, quicker, but anyway, there, there is a tendency um, when there is a need in the area um, to have more bucket trucks uh, than initially um, was probably envisioned. Um, and I guess um, one of the other things I just wanna bring up is that um, one of the issues, yeah, you know, the, the truck or the, the trailer has been moved to the back of the lot, but that means it's, it's actually closer to the, the people on the back of Potter and the cul-de-sac of Potter crossing. So, um, you know, it's just, it's the same material. It's just being moved to a different location. Um, and it's, like I said, it's probably closer now to, to the crossings maybe than it was um, because before it was closer to the road, now it's in the back and it's actually closer to the backs of those property. But um, I was just wondering if there was anything that could be done in terms of natural barriers, like maybe putting in some kind of berm there or um, like a natural barrier, like I'm not sure what the, what kind of trees were put um, on the corner of Russell Road and um, Cedar, uh, Cedar Street, um, but it's like there's a berm and then on top of that, there's these, I don't know what you wanna call them. There is some kind of natural barrier that that helps um with you know with the visual image so i guess i would ask the commission to consider asking the owner to put some kind of natural barrier because the trees have been taken down um the lot really is encroaching more on our property than before so if there's something that could be done to alleviate that um, that would really be helpful. Thank you. I guess just so that, you know, I, I think most, if not all of us have been out there, the kind of the geometry of what you're talking about is that the houses are down lower. Then you look up the hill at the fence and then you look at the trailer over the fence. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else in the public wishing to comment on this application? Yes, I would like to. Karen Mellenfont, hi. 81 Schoolhouse, hi, 81 Schoolhouse Crossing. I've um, been at the crossings for okay. eight years and um, Arrow Road has gone from something I barely noticed to something um, I have to say that's grown quite a bit since I've been here in eight years. 
Um, I do agree with what Mary has to say. And I do like many of the suggestions that the, the current tenant is offering to do. My concerns are what are going, if the, the stipulations that you make in the special permit, such as X amount of trucks and uh, the requirement that they only back up the trucks. In other words, uh, there's a quiet hour from such and such hours and things like that. What would be their, their recourse for them not um, following those things if it comes to it where they're not being quiet or they're doing things that are not allowed in the permit that gets granted? I, I guess the short answer is that either you or some other resident would draw that to the attention of the zoning enforcement officer who would go and uh, probably start with uh, like what would deter them from not abiding by the rule or the the stipulations made in the special permit if it's just a matter of somebody complaining or letting the zoning commission know that they're parking on one day, eight trucks and another day, 15 trucks, but then the next day they're back to eight trucks. If that makes any sense you, I don't know if you're following where I'm going with this. Yeah. And I, I was, I was going to try to answer, which is basically. I apologize. That. Okay, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. No, no <laughs> this, it's one of the difficulties of not being able to see each other. You know, right. <laughs> being in the same room is, is nobody can take advantage of the, the kind of social cues. Um, basically, I mean, either either you or one of the other residents would complain, um, or the zoning enforcement officer would go drive by, take a look. Somebody would tell them to take a look, um, and depending on the nature of the violation, it could be anything from you know, a warning letter to a cease and desist letter to citations with fines associated with them, um, or, you know, ultimately potentially a show cause hearing, you know, asking the applicant to come in and explain why the special permit shouldn't be revoked. So it, um, you know, the, there, there are remedies, there are penalties. Okay. Um, you know, unfortunately there is one zoning enforcement officer in town. Right. Um, you know, so that, you know, to the extent that you become aware of issues, um, you know, let the zoning enforcement officer know about it um, and, uh, you know, kind of pursue those channels and, um, you know, won't tell you what to do if that doesn't get attention, you know, other than, you know, he reports to the, to the town manager. So if, you know, if, if that doesn't seem to work, that that would be the, the next level of recourse. But basically, um, you know, if someone is violating the conditions and they're, you know, verifiably violating the conditions and routinely violating the conditions, um, you know, don't just stew in silence, you know, let the town know because, you know, otherwise we would have no way of knowing. Right. No, that we're we're all very very tight knit community and very vigilant about what goes on in our neighborhood. Neighborhood. So I don't think that would be an issue. Um, I just have the concern. I don't know. It's 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 tough. It's I I like the ideas that they brought forth to try to remedy it, but at the same time, it's still it's still so close to our you know the crossings. It just concerns me that you know when they do have a storm, if we can you know. Can we limit the amount, the hours that they're in operation when they're there? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I think the nature of the business makes it a little more difficult because they have right. to respond when there's an emergency and you can't guarantee sure. that's nine to five. Which we witnessed last night because they had they had one. It the, the wasn't that they're making noise, but they had a truck. They had something going on in the yard. But the, I mean, there was over eighteen thousand people without electricity last night, so I can understand. Right. Exactly. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, anyone else in the public wanting to comment on this application? Anyone else? Um, 
if not, I guess bring it back to the commission um, and the applicant. Um, you know, based on the, the comments from the public, are there any additional items that the commission would like to pursue with the applicant? Um, Peter, do you have any thoughts on additional screening? I guess it would be on the east side where the trailer is, what the, you know, any kind of feasible way to improve the screening there, you know, short of installing 60 foot trees. I mean, there, there are some, you know, fabric um, materials, green fabric screening. Um, that um, I think as long as they have, um, you know, uh, wind holes um, can potentially do the job. Um, you know, fencing over, you know, eight feet in height has to be specifically engineered. And, you know, I'm not sure that's the, the solution and, and it's only gonna be eight feet, you know, or so. So right. there may be some uh, provisions like that that could be installed, but, even and you know the contractor obviously has access to telephone poles, so um, he's got, <laughs> got that going for him, so that he could maybe maybe do something. There's some probably select areas. Obviously, it's also you know winter time, and you know there's no leaves on the trees, and obviously that doesn't uh, doesn't help uh, either. So um, the other thing, and and I I did have this conversation with the contractor, and he can obviously speak for himself. This may be a um, short term. Um, use of this property, they are subject to, um, you know, the the bidding process of the um, parent company that hires them, uh, and that happens, you know, I don't know if it's annually or every other year. I think it's up again in July. So, if they don't get the contract, then obviously they have no need for using the yard. So, um, I don't know if that was discussed earlier or not. But um, so I think that's a another reason. Um, you know, that things like paving and, you know, some of the more permanent improvements may not be necessarily warranted in this case. So maybe some, some more temporary measures um, should, be, should be considered. But there are a bunch of other conditions that the applicant um, testified to that I think need to be factored in uh, as conditions. And um, we talked about the number of trucks. Um, we talked about the town engineers uh, conditions um, we talked about moving the, you know, the bucket trucks and the trailer into different areas on the property. Um, moving the uh, portable to toilets and also screening those with uh, some sort of fencing. Um, you may also want to, given the potentially short-term nature of this tenant, is attach a time frame so that in a year or two. Um, the permit would expire, the applicant could come back in and seek an extension of it. But at that point, you could assess whether he's been complying with the various terms and conditions and uh, make another decision at that time as to whether they've you know, been a good neighbor and have done the things that um, you expected them to do. So that would be another uh, possible condition. Uh, I would not advise that you make the permit specific to this tenant, um, but maybe have a time frame. So they can be reviewed again um, in, in short order. Uh, Peter, George uh, here. Um, can we require, I'd like to at least discuss this, require active maintenance of the lot surface by an applicant? Uh, yeah, we, we have no, we have- Considering other... this is not a paved surface. Yes, yeah, this is different than you would normally do. So I don't- right. uh, We gotta get used to this kind of thing. I like to discuss it during the- there's some point in the meeting here. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, filling and you know regrading the lot as as um, as wa is warranted. Yeah, I mean that that's one of the things where you're trying to keep it pervious. You want it to to function. Yeah, I think um, I think we can define like a, a rectangle of area that's like the heavily trafficked area and the most visual from uh, the most uh, obvious from the roadway. Like you can do a 20 by 40 piece of that entrance entryway, uh, hog out all that 
material and put in some some clean base like that is probably not going to be what you have out there already, but probably bring something in new and just say that, uh, you know, coordinate maybe with the town engineer and say it's got to be at least eight inches thick. You got a lot of heavily traveled, heavy vehicles going in there. And it's important to do the, the high traffic area, not necessarily important to do the whole lot, especially uh, given what Peter just said about the sort of transient nature of the business. Yeah, I mean, ironically, if you look at the aerial photographs, you can pretty well see where the work needs to be done because there are holes full of water. Yeah, yeah, and it's obviously it's the high traffic area, and yeah. you know, so if you did a the width of the opening looks to be about 20, 25 feet, something like that, and then you just say like forty feet in, um, and you're then you're done. Like, and and then that um, will get rid of any of that rutting and you know, any of the other rutting that happens inside the lot, that's their business, as long as it's not visual from the road, visible from the road. Okay. All right, anybody else on the commission have any brilliant insights before we think about closing the public hearing? Did you just say that that was a brilliant insight? Said any other brilliant insights in addition to yours? No, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you just called me brilliant right now. Yeah, put that in the minutes. <laughs> we'll let the record reflect. Yeah. I heard that. I agree. Right. Anybody else? Uh, if not, does the applicant have any final comments or suggestions? Or um, you've, you've sort of heard the direction that this is going. Are there any of the things that we have discussed that are concerning to you that you'd like to talk about? Um, as far as uh, just a couple points, I guess, with the, the as far as the lot, uh, I had actually spoke with the, the, the superintendent or property manager today, and uh, we were on board with moving forward and, and assessing that lot as far as the potholes and, and regrading and redressing up the the surface so that is in the works we have our our own equipment to do so the property owner has his own equipment to do so and we're going to work together to get that done while we work on the uh, uh or the recommended uh installation of the the perimeter natural drain uh, the name of it is skipping my my mind but uh the drainage around the perimeter of the lot as well as as, as redressing the surface um, my only concern is I know it's a big question with everyone is the amount of vehicles, um, but it's a perfect example that arose yet, as of yesterday was the storm. Is, is if we're limited, uh, if, if that is a clause on this, um, as far as how many vehicles, I would definitely like uh, to at least, or I guess it's up, up to the, the commission to decide, but if there's a storm situation like that, it's, just, it's definitely a, a higher priority of the area to have vehicles. It's not every day, but for example, as in last night um, and the two nights before, I mean, we have guys working 24 hours a day um, that cycle in and out and it does bring a lot more vehicles to the site. So I guess that's just something to think about as far as limiting the amount of vehicles that and maybe it's a norm, the normal day versus, is versus a storm day when there's thousands of outages in the area. Well, I guess just so that, you know, you can, you can help us evaluate that. I mean, how many, I guess we're talking about trucks, but we're also talking about passenger vehicles. Um, you said six, seven, eight trucks, maybe 10. How many passenger vehicles on a normal day versus, versus a storm day? Is it basically a one-to-one -one equivalency? Yes. Yes, as, as far as, as personal vehicles versus is equipment, right now due to, to the, uh, the surrounding uh, our coronavirus regulations and rules throughout the company, we're limited and through our Eversource, we're limited to one person per vehicle, um, right. a, a company vehicle. So it's a, it would be a one-to-one -one ratio for large truck to, to small truck, or maybe even less because some of the guys have their own uh, work pickup trucks that come and go, but they don't stay there. Um, you might see those during the day if they're in the office or doing paperwork in their, their personal truck. Um, but as far as large vehicles, one-to-one -one ratio. And, and this, the, the 10 number that we talked about, or six to eight, 10, that's, that would be a regular operation. I know that 
the, the photos I took that day, everyone except one was gone. Um, and then in a storm situation, you, you could be talking about 10 to 15 vehicles. Um, but a regular day basis is, is, is about six to eight trucks. Okay. To operate, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said at the beginning and, and last time, it, it was just, frankly, I thought it was important to have an order of magnitude so that, you know, it, it wasn't unlimited. Understood, understood. And I know, like, we, we also discuss it's just the different, it's, in, and I hate that I can't give you an exact answer of what's going to go because it, it, it is such a variable um, on how the situation is today if we get a storm twice a month or we don't get one for six months. It's, it's, yeah. it, it's greatly different. That's why they call them emergencies. Exactly. Okay, Tom? Tom, did you have something? No. Yes. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, anyone else on the commission have anything before we close the public hearing? If not, is there a motion? Motion so made, Mr. Chairman, George. All right, George made a motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Second from Ryan. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I'm gonna abstain, Rich, and I'm not gonna participate in the uh, deliberation on this matter. Okay, and that was Joe Hammer abstaining from the vote and not participating in the deliberations. Um, does someone want to make a motion to start discussion? Or does someone want to start make a motion to approve this application? Is that what you want, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, I mean, just so that we have a motion on the floor to discuss. Right. So okay. made. I, I Conditions or anything, I'll leave that up to a discussion point at the, some time. Yeah, I think that makes sense. All right. And if, if we're going to add anything for um, reinforcing any of the pavement structure or the gravel structure as it is, uh, are we go, should we leave that up to the town engineer? Should we have them? Yeah, okay. So I, I would I would add that as a stipulation that um, to work with uh, work with the town officials for an appropriate size and uh, thickness depth of um, pervious base gravel whatever they're going to end up using. Okay. Um, could someone second the motion first? And then we'll. Oh, <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. All right, motion made by George, seconded by Ryan. Um, Ryan suggested the first stipulation being work with the town engineer on the um, improvement of the entrance areas of the parking lot uh, with respect to the uh, appropriate sub base. And continued. Maintenance of it, or you want that uh, another item? Well, that's the point: is that the the maintenance will just be like few and far between if they actually do a depth of of gravel that is in you know compacted properly, and like the the town is aware of it. So it, it should hold up. Then. If you do if you do it right, you're not going to be running into right. it every year. Yeah. Um, Peter, when we were before we closed the hearing, you, you had kind of a, a list of some of the items that were from your memo and from Derek's that um, could you sort of go through those as additional stipulations? Yes, I, had, I had a total of uh, 10 uh, potential conditions. The first being um, per the uh, town engineer's email regarding the uh, infiltration trench uh, around the perimeter of the fencing. Number two was the uh, condition on uh, the pavement uh, maintenance and uh, sub substructure to the satisfaction of the town engineer, as Ryan mentioned. Uh, number three is whether you want to attach a 
time frame uh, under which the permit might expire and have to be renewed. Uh, number four, um, the recommendation that the portable. Uh, uh, village... Peter, would you stop right there? What, sure. that, uh, that condition about length, uh, what do you recommend? Um, I, I'm, I'm not recommending anything. Um, probably just, probably just want to discuss it, how, how soon you want them to come back. Um, maybe the, maybe the end of, um, the end of 21. Fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that makes sense. We can have it for a one year term that we can extend administratively if there yep. have been no yep. violations of the conditions. So number four was the uh, condition on the portable toilets being relocated and screened. Number five was the proposed uh, relocation of the trucks within the compound. Number six was the condition on the bucket arms being uh, lowered to the extent uh, practicable. Number seven was uh, relocating the trailer as was testified to by the applicant. Number eight uh, was the uh, maximum number of, of trucks in a typical daily operation of 10 with a, um, an exception provision uh, related to uh, storm related uh, activity. Obviously that, that has to go above 10. Uh, number nine, um, oh, that, wait a minute. Would repeat that again for me. Sure. Uh, last one. Establishing a, a typical daily maximum of ten trucks using the yard under normal, you know, uh, daily conditions. However, with the understanding that there are going to be uh, periods of time uh, during storm-related activities where the number will have to go beyond that uh, for sh for short periods of time. Okay, that's good. Fine. Thank you. Number nine, that the uh, trucks are parked within the compound uh, to minimize uh, the need for um, reverse backing up motions that activate the, the safety, uh, um, safety warning devices. And then number 10, uh, that the applicant work with town staff to come up with a um, uh, possible screening uh, solution to minimize the impact on the neighboring property. So those were the 10. Off the trash outside the fence. I think, as I said earlier, the, those are probably not conditions for the applicant, but maybe as a secondary, you know, after after we vote on this, that um, staff staff will pass that on staff to the will, property owner. Okay. Yep. Thank you. I guess just to be clear on your screening, you're, we're talking about both on the north side, possibly making the fence taller to block headlights and on the east side, if feasible to block view of the, the larger trailer. Is that what you meant? Um, certainly, certainly can cover all of that. No, I, I just didn't know what you had in mind and those were some- I'm not sure things. how you're gonna lock um, the view into the compound from um, Russell Road so that you don't see the trailers and the trucks. The elevation is higher and I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it, uh, the condition on the screening for the neighboring property with the headlights and through the trees can probably be uh, more easily addressed than trying to make you know, the equipment, the trailer, the trucks um, invisible from the street if that's what the intent um, is. I, I don't know that. I was thinking in the other direction from the houses down the hill. Oh, okay. Um, I, agree, I agree with you, Peter, that viewing in there from Russell Road, that's difficult to yes. figure out how to. Yeah, I, I don't know how to address that given the, you, you, can't, you can't build a fence high enough to, to do that. But yeah, Rich, the other, yeah, from the other, from the, from the crossing um, properties is really what I was trying to, to address. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and the only thought I had on view from Russell Road was to, uh, you know, close the gates when it's not in use. Yeah, I, I think that's reasonable. Okay. Good. Yeah, I mean, that, that was pretty much everything I, I had written down is anyone else on the commission have any comments on any of these stipulations or ideas for either modifications or additions? 
Do you want to be specific, Mr. Chairman, on the bucket heights or not? No, I don't. No, I mean, I, I don't. I don't think that. I mean, I, I wouldn't pretend to know. I um, wouldn't either, and I'm not going to. I'm just asking, do we want to? And I don't think so. But. No, I mean, the, the applicant testified that they were going to, you know, basically lower them as low as they can be, and still, you know, right. ensure that they're not going to have all of the content stolen. I just want to say in the winter time, which is now with no trees, no leaves on those trees, this is what you see from the units at the top of the hill. There's no yeah. question those higher buckets. So yeah, and, and you, you see, see them from the lower units actually, too. Doesn't cover it as it exists. So yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, it, it looked like a carnival with like all the you know, the Ferris wheels being installed and that kind of thing. I mean, and I, I think that's the, you know, the visual image that we're trying to mitigate here. Okay. Um, anyone else? If not, any further discussion? All right. That, I guess, um, as long as everybody understands what it is that we're voting on. Uh, approving the application with the stipulations that have been discussed. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Joe abstained. Yeah. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you to the neighbors for remaining vigilant. Uh, you know, don't want you to feel ignored or isolated, but uh, you know, unfortunately we only see you every once in a while and it's <laughs> uh, we do in response to something rather than uh, anything. Hey, Peter, when are we going back to regular meetings? Did you hear anything? 2022. Yeah. <laughs> as good as, as ours. So for the foreseeable future. Come on, George, don't you like this? No, and I can't even get into town hall to bother these guys and keep them from working. That's why they have that big warning sign and the security at the front oh, desk. That's, that's why they're saying 2022, George. Yeah, if it weren't for you, we'd all be there. <laughs> we'd all already be there. Yeah. All right. Uh, next item, public hearing application 2060-20Z, Weathersfield Retail LLC, seeking a special permit in accordance with sections 52F2 and 52F3 for a drive through restaurant and associated site improvements at 140 Silas Dean Highway. Uh, is there, Megan, are you presenting on behalf of the applicant? I am, good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Megan Hope. I'm an attorney with Alter and Pearson in Glastonbury. Uh, here tonight with me, you will be hearing from uh, probably Peter LaPointe. He's the uh, representative for the property owner. Our project engineer, Dana Steele, is also here. And we also have our architect, Robert Grimaldi. And then I believe I saw um, Scott Hesketh on here as well. Um, so that's our team. So I did prepare a PowerPoint presentation. Um, Peter, um, are you able to enable me to uh, share my screen? We can hold it up to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Let's. Um, I don't know if I need to do anything on my end. Can you can you try on your end and see if um, it allows you to do that? Yeah, it says that the host has disabled screen sharing. Uh, let me see. Not something I've done before, but if you want to, anyone has any guidance for me to do that screen sharing function? Uh, Denise is actually calling me, so oh. she <laughs> answer, so. Hey. What would you do without her, Peter? <laughs> hey. Yeah, I had to do the screen sharing at a meeting a couple of weeks ago. It was yeah. not a pretty scene. 
I made my mouse very big, so it's a great pointer, but so hopefully we can get this to work. Yep. Um, someone else couldn't do it. They sent me an email with 20 PDFs in it that I had to open individually and then, you know, one at a time, Make share notes. my screen with them. Yeah. Meg, give, give it a shot now, see if it works. Excellent. Okay. It's working. Good. Okay. All right. Ooh. Everybody see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So again, as I mentioned, this uh, application is for a special permit for a drive through restaurant and also um, a restaurant with outdoor dining. Um, our uh, proposed tenant is Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. Uh, the property owner, Weathersfield Retail LLC, is um, in a contract with them. So they are um, a real tenant. They've already spent um, a considerable amount of money on the proposed elevations and signage package that they've uh, uh, submitted to the town. The slide that I'm showing now is an aerial view of the site. Uh, the site is the uh, Jordan Lane Shopping Center. It is um, on the southeast corner of Jordan Lane, which uh, runs east-west, and the Silasine Highway, which runs north-south. Um, the whole site is about 10.6 acres, located in the general business zone. Uh, our proposed application, or the proposed uses for the application are permitted after the issuance of a special permit. Um, the shopping center was constructed, constructed in the 60s. Um, it has three entrances. It has um, an unsignalized intersection on Silasine, um, a signalized intersection, which is a little off this picture down um, across from Cumberland Road, and then another unsignalized intersection up here at Jordan Lane. Um, we're not proposing to touch any of those access points as part of the, this application. So all those points uh, will remain the same. There is um, a utility easement on this easterly portion um, of the site. Um, and uh, I'll go on down to the next slide, which just shows a close up of the area that we're proposing to redevelop. So everything I've outlined here in yellow is the area that we are going to disturb as part of this application. It's about 30,000 square feet, um, so 0.68 acres. Um, as you can see, it abuts Jordan Lane. Currently, there's pavement that pretty much goes right up. Um, to the property line. And as you'll see in the next slide, we're actually able to create um, some green space in this area. So we definitely think it's gonna be an enhancement from what's there now. This area is almost entirely paved as you can see from this aerial photo. Uh, back in the late nineties, uh, we uh, the property did receive approval for a 6,600 square foot pharmacy with drive-through. Um, that pharmacy was never constructed, but a lot of the underground utilities were already put in place. Uh, so we do have some underground infrastructure that's already been taken care of. Though, so that should make the construction process um, somewhat more streamlined. Okay. So what I have now on the screen is our proposed site plan. I was gonna turn it over to our engineer, Dana Steele, so that he can um, talk you through the site plan. Dana, do you want me to continue to point while you talk? Does that work? Sure, that's fine. Okay. All right, uh, thanks, Megan. Uh, for the record, Dana Steele, a professional engineer with J.R. Russo and Associates. Our office is at 1 Showham Road in East Windsor. And we prepared this site plan uh, that you see before you for this uh, application. And I'm just going to uh, go through it uh, uh, briefly um, to uh, explain what's, uh, what's being proposed. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the restaurant is in the center of the, of the pavement area. And there is a drive-through lane that runs uh, around the perimeter of the building. And it runs in a counterclockwise uh, direction so that the driver ends up on the drive-through window side. Uh, so as you're, as you're accessing this site, if you're coming from Jordan Lane, uh, there's an access off of Jordan Lane that you can take. If you turn into that, that driveway, you can uh, head south and, uh, and then take a right, uh, go by the, uh, the north end of the existing building and you'll come to an intersection where you can then turn right again. And then you can either park on the left-hand side uh, and access the, uh, the, the building uh, by walking across the drive aisle. Or if you wanna to go to the drive-through lane, you turn right. And there's angle parking all around the perimeter of the drive-through lane as well. 
that's one way parking. You can see by those bold arrows there that that's the direction of flow. So uh, it makes for an efficient uh, uh, traffic flow around the building. If you don't uh, find any spaces, you can easily keep going around the building. Uh, and, uh, and if need be, you can even overflow uh, to the other side of the island uh, uh, the, to the west of uh, the development. There's existing parking there. One of the comments that was uh, raised by your engineer was suggestion to add a sidewalk uh, in that island between the existing parking and our new area. So we've added that short little connector. We also eliminated one of the parking spaces with uh, striping um, on both sides of that sidewalk so that you can get from one side of the island to the other easily. Uh, we, in response to a design review, we have looked at uh, various locations for the accessible parking spaces. Originally, we had them on the, the west side of the drive-through lane, uh, I mean, uh, of the access drive. And uh, we've moved them uh, in response to design review uh, closer to the front door in the angled parking spaces. So the first two angled spaces are now accessible uh, parking spaces with the appropriate signage and a, and a crosswalk to get from the uh, spaces to, to the uh, handicap ramp and into the front door, which is on the south side of the building. Uh, the, um, the plan does show um, uh, some ad additional landscape islands uh, and uh, when we maybe if we move on to the sure. um, to the next sheet the next sheet this is a, a calculation sheet that I provided for impervious coverage uh, as, as Megan indicated we are decreasing uh, the impervious coverage for the site more green less pavement uh, you can see the areas that are more green that are in green and the areas uh, where that are currently green that we're that we're making impervious are in, are in the red. So uh, th those areas are being paved, the other areas are being removed and it's a net uh, increase in green space for the site. Um, and, uh, and so we are um, improving the overall, I think aesthetics of the site, we're improving runoff, uh, reducing the amount of runoff, we're, re we're improving water quality with less impervious surfaces. So overall uh, from, a, from an engineering standpoint, this is, this is uh, we're moving in the right direction for this site, and uh, I believe that uh, your your town engineer has reviewed this and it is uh, is in agreement with that. He does have some uh, comments that he uh, would like us to address. Most of them we have actually already addressed, but um, there's a few that uh, we still need to uh, finalize with him. Um, but the uh, um, one one thing I wanted just to note briefly about this uh, this layout plan is uh, there. Your regulations look for landscaped islands at the end of every uh, parking area. And we have one area in the southwest, uh, I'm sorry, the southeast corner of our development area that I'm showing is painted striped. And the reason for that is twofold. First of all, there's an existing catch basin, which is that little square just, just below the, the painted island that all this site wants to drain towards. And so if I put an island there, it's going to block the flow to that catch basin. Secondly, and probably you know, more, more significantly, because there's ways to work around that, but more significantly um, is that particular area is within the flood zone. So this, this area is uh, partially in the flood zone. The building is not in the flood zone, uh, but the entrance to the site of Jordan Lane there is below the 100 year flood elevation. Uh, not the entire driveway, but that, that intersection um, uh, to the, just to the uh, southeast of where Megan's pointing uh, is uh, is in the floodplain and it encroaches into that into that landscape island area. So, if I were to create a curved island there, it would reduce the flood storage. It may seem like it's a pretty minimal increase, but we're not allowed to increase it at all. And so, uh, we did not open a, a curved island there. So, if we need a waiver for that, we are requesting that that uh, that waiver for that because of. Uh, um, Flood management uh, for flood management reasons uh, to uh, to have uh, an efficient and, uh, and minimal impact to the flood flood zone. Uh, the the actual net result of this project is an increase in flood storage. So we do we were able to uh, to improve um, uh, the site in regard to flooding as well. So um, and we, that's really the direction that we think uh, we should be going, trying to make it better, not not just keep it the same, but make try to make it a little better. And that's what we've done. So um, I think that's it for for that 
that sheet and uh, the next one, is it the landscaping, yes, Megan? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so just, I guess, before I hand it over to Megan, Megan's gonna talk about the landscaping a little bit. I just wanna just, uh, just note, as Megan said, um, the utilities are, I've already been uh, piped to this, this area, but we'll be connecting sanitary sewer. We'll be connecting a grease trap uh, for the restaurant into the sewer. We have a um, water, uh, city water and uh, a storm drainage system. We're providing uh, roof infiltration for the, the roof runoff. Uh, that was one of the comments from the engineer that I still need to coordinate with him. Um, basically the issue, he's concerned that, um, that what I have for the roof infiltration will not make it, will not all make it into the stone beneath the perforated pipe. Um, and he, he thinks that, uh, that the water will not go through the perforations quickly enough and that some water will bypass the infiltration system. So I'm going to work with him on coming up with a, a minor tweak to the, to the configuration of that detail, uh, provide what he's suggesting some underground chambers to, uh, to resolve that problem. But um, that's a, uh, uh, something that um, we, when we were at wetlands previously, they were comfortable making that a condition of approval. Hopefully you will be as well just uh, respond, uh, incorporating the town engineer's comments as conditions of approval, and we would be uh, agreeable to that. Um, there is a dumpster area as well. I think Meg is gonna talk about the enclosure a little bit. Um, and uh, um, and I know um, your, your planner had some comments about possibly relocating that dumpster. And, and I think may, maybe Meg is gonna get into that as, as well, or I can address it uh, further if need be. Um, but uh, the, the other factor for storm drainage, just want to bring to your attention, and this was really highlighted in our wetland application, but just so you're aware, um, town engineers also required us to provide additional water quality treatment. Cur currently, this site has been here a while. It predates some of the, the modern uh, environmental regulations. And so we're gonna be bringing this up to, uh, up, up to standards by providing some treatment for the water before, before dis it discharges to the ditch along the eastern property line. So, so we're doing a number of things, spending money in this site to, to make it better, uh, to make it more modern, to bring it up to current standards. And uh, we hope that you'll um, uh, view this application favorably. I think that's it. If you wanna take it from there, Megan? Uh, with yeah, the that answer. sounds good. Thank you, Dana. Um, so uh, just to briefly go over the, the landscaping plan, we are adding street trees along Jordan Lane. Um, DRAC did ask us to incorporate some more evergreen um, plants into the plant so that there was some interest during uh, the winter months. So we did add that specifically in this uh, front island as well. Um, and then we also have plantings along the whole sort of uh, periphery of our developed area. Um, we did receive a comment uh, in Peter's memo uh, regarding looking at relocating the dumpster enclosure. Uh, the dumpster enclosure is right, uh, located right here. I'm circling it with, um, with my mouse. And I'm just gonna jump to the next slide to show um, the detail. It is um, eight feet, six inches tall. It's going to have solid walls on the back, on the back side and the two sides. And then the front will be um, metal, uh, metal frames with uh, wood uh, on the front of that. Um, we did speak with Popeyes about possibly relocating the dumpster and I'm just gonna go back to the aerial photo that I have, um, or maybe this one is better. I'm trying to group it with some of the other dumpsters that are located um, on the site and uh, Popeyes just felt that it was uh, too far of a walk uh, for their employees, especially during um, times of the year when it's dark at night um, or in the winter when there's um, a lot of snow on the ground. So we felt that it was more appropriate to keep it where we had proposed it. And so today we did have um, the team dress it up a little bit more with some more landscaping. So we've added arborvitaes um, along these two sides as I'm pointing and also an additional uh, Zalkova um, deciduous tree as well. Um, as Dana mentioned, we are looking for some waiver requests for landscaping. Um, we are unable to get an island um, in this location, so we're asking a waiver for that. And then um, we do not have, um, we're required to have a landscape island in this row here because we have more than 10 cars. Uh, we can't add an island there um, because if we take it up with a landscaping, we fall below 
the required parking, which we just meet right now. Um, so those are the two um, portions of the landscaping regulation that we're looking for a waiver um, to be granted on. Okay, so we did that. So Scott, are you here? Is he here? Yes, Scott. Um, all right, I'm gonna have Scott uh, discuss the traffic briefly. He did uh, submit a report which went out in the packets. Take it away, Scott. Everybody hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, great. Good evening. My name is Scott Eskin. I am a traffic engineer uh, consultant on the project. I prepared a letter dated November 18th, 2020, which is part of your package. <laughs> We're asked to take a look at the traffic impacts here. Unfortunately, due to the COVID situation, uh, doing traffic counts on the existing roadways was not uh, appropriate at this time as it wouldn't have given us uh, appropriate numbers. But in our report, we Chairman, did- I can't hear him too well. Is Maybe it? it's me with my hearing, I don't know. No, it's pretty quiet. Know. I heard yes. you. Yeah, yeah Scott, can you get a little bit well. louder? <laughs> Which one of these microphones is taken? Yeah, that's, 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 that's better? Hey, yeah, that's we gotta take care of us old guys. <laughs> hey, I'm one of us old guys, so all right. Is that better? Yeah, that seems better. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, yes, uh, we were asked to take a look at the traffic uh, impacts of the proposed development. Uh, I was saying because of the COVID situation, doing uh, current counts was not an option for us. But in our report, we did present to you uh, traffic volume counts from the Connecticut Department of Transportation both for the Silas Dean Highway and for Jordan Lane. Uh, if you look at the tables in the report, uh, you can see the traffic volumes presented there. Uh, what those we did- 2017 volumes? Those are the latest volumes available from Condot and I believe they are the- 2018. Uh, one of them was October, 2018 and the other one was October, 2018. Right. Yes, Thank you. So they're uh, 2018 counts. <clears throat> um, but more significantly, because this site is the area we're, lo the area we're looking to develop, the uh, performance of this Scott, you're going you're in and out. Yeah, you're going in and out, Scott. I'm going in and out. Yeah, that uh, sounds good. Don't move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the, the traffic impacts of this particular development would be the difference generation of restaurant and the pharmacy. Sorry, I have a hard time, man. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, I'm breaking up. Uh, I, 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 I don't know what to do. You're good now. Yeah. Okay, we'll just, we'll, we'll try it that way. Uh, I'll be concise then, so that uh, we don't break out as, up as much. Uh, the, let me get to the bottom line then. Uh, we expect that this uh, proposed restaurant will generate about 126 trips during the afternoon peak hour and 134 trips during the Saturday peak hour. And that represents an increase of about 58 trips and 76 trips respectively. And considering we have three points of access to the development, when you distribute that traffic to the roadway network we're looking at increased traffic in the range of 12 trips at any one particular movement or 25 or 30 trips at any one particular intersection. So it's uh, it's our opinion, these uh, increase in traffic is relatively minor and there would be no uh, disruption or degradation in the traffic levels of service at, at these intersections. Um, we do have to apply and we have applied to the Office of the State Traffic Administration uh, because this site operates under a certificate and we'll, we'll be looking for an approval from that, uh, that organization as well. Uh, I'll leave it at that because I'm breaking up and if the commission has any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Yeah, I do. Um, how do you feel about the traffic going around the north end of the shopping center and conflicting with your outgoing traffic, going to the uh, exit to Jordan Lane. Uh, there's a right and a left and it uh, 
and you're conflicting in front of Price Right and that end of the shopping center, the traffic there. Uh, do you find that an issue or a problem? I don't see it as a particular problem. It It is the historic traffic pattern on the site. Um, yeah, without this restaurant. True, that's true. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, hold it. I'll say this. I don't want to argue with you, but I, I've been around this town for too long. And uh, that, uh, and I even probably approved this shopping center. But the trouble is, uh, that is does have some conflict with the outgoing traffic from your site. And you do you see anything up here at the uh, you know north uh, west corner of the shopping center with your traffic and the uh, difficulties of getting through there? Well, uh, the restaurant generates about two trips per minute, which is on average or during the peak hour which is about one trip every 30 seconds. Um, and that's a relatively low volume of traffic. Um, I have not done a capacity analysis of that unsignalized intersection uh, in front of the shopping center. Nope, the lower left-hand corner of the plan. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, that one there. I mean, no, yeah. Area. Yeah, we're looking, you know, uh, the shopping center probably has a trip generation of about uh, 200 trips an hour. Again, over three different driveways. Uh, the restaurant is in the range of uh, 120 trips an hour. Um, so we're looking at you know eight to 10 vehicles a minute, perhaps going through that intersection. Not a particularly high volume of traffic. So I, I don't expect it'll be any uh, any particular difficulties of traffic moving through that location. Are you um, able to join landing making a left? Anything out there? No problem. Making a left out of Jordan Lane. Uh, yeah. again, uh, since we didn't have uh, recent traffic counts, uh, I didn't do an analysis. But um, based on the traffic volumes uh, that were, you know, if if the shopping center has uh, forty percent of its traffic goes out that driveway, uh, the driveway should operate uh, at, at the efficient levels of service. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So. Um, I, I, I have a question here, Mike, Mike Vieira here. Um, um, as far as like the dumpster location goes, if I'm looking at this, um, like the traffic plan correctly, now the direction which a truck would have to come to pick up the dumpsters or to empty the dumpsters would be going against the traffic pattern that you guys have planned is that is that correct? Am I looking at this correctly? You know the way the dumpsters are facing. Yes. Yeah, Dana or Dana or Peter, do you want to answer that? Yeah, yeah he is. <clears throat> he is correct. The the traffic uh, the truck picking up the trash would have to go against the flow, and <clears throat> our expectation, our understanding is that the trucks will be scheduled before the restaurant opens. So that going against the drive-through flow or that exit lane flow is not going to be a problem. Okay, because I was just kind of kind of curious there, because I I wasn't originally. Um, I I mean I kind of understand Popeye's position with uh you know it being in close proximity to the restaurant itself, and and their need you know for their employees to walk with the trash. I was just kind of thinking you know practically, you know it kind of looks like it's set up you know with the you know, the amount of parking spaces and just the traffic pattern and its proximity to the highway. I was just kind of thinking, you know, maybe it's kind of more of a drive through driven, you know, pattern here. And, yep. you know, if, you know, that that could create an issue. I don't know. Just just bringing that up. Thank you. For we, that. Yeah, we did discuss that with the tenant. They're aware that it's going to have to be an early morning pickup. That's not a problem for them or the trash haulers. We have that at other locations. And the dumpster location, <clears throat> the dumpster enclosure location was in part driven by the, the need to queue the truck up. He needs at least 40 feet to line up straight to pick up those, those dumpsters. So it worked perfectly. Great, thank you. And the tenant has this situation at uh, many other locations. Yes. Right. Questions, a couple of 
mostly traffic related questions. The, um, did we look at the queuing for the left hand going southbound on 99, um, that storage length uh, for the left hand turn coming from 99 into the, like the main price right entrance. There's that queue length and then there's the, the left turn coming out of the north exit, taking a left out of there. Um, just, just curious if you can discuss a little bit more like the traffic pattern for how many people are leaving the north and going to 15. So they have to cross one, two, three lanes in order to get into that other queue. Sometimes that queue might back up. I've, I've been there before. Um, and then uh, one other question, was there coordination with the with price right at all because you're going to end up seeing more traffic like through traffic going um, past the front of price right using it as like sort of a cut through in order to um, to get to the, the northern end of the lot so you're introducing a lot of traffic in a in a pedestrian area so I was just curious if if price right or uh, you know the overall owner of the property had any thoughts on, you know, sometimes they do like a mid block opening in that long Island in the entryway uh, just to get some of that traffic out of the way of the pedestrians and connect them up. So I don't know, I'm just curious if any, if there's any discussion to be had on that. Um, but overall, I, I, I realize there isn't really a, this isn't like a huge trip generator. This isn't something that's going to increase to, an already, it, it is like an already congested intersection. I just had a couple questions on there's, so there's the left hand out of 99 to get into the main price, right? There's the left hand coming out of the Northern section to go to 15. Um, and then generally the, uh, like a, any price right coordination, any conversations that were had there um, for, for folks who are heading south on 99 and then need to cut across the, the front of a parking, uh, parking, the front of a um, grocery store, which isn't always the most fun <laughs> road to travel. <laughs> well, um, Scott Heskett, uh, unfortunately, since we couldn't do turning movement counts at the intersection and we were relying on the automated counts from DOT, I would have been estimating turn volumes and I you know I could have taken an educa educated guess but it would have been just that a guess so doing an analysis to determine how long the queue length would be by adding a handful of cars to it uh, we would not have learned anything valuable in that analysis because I could have been off by 30 or 40 percent um, with the numbers so uh, we, we did not do that kind of analysis again because of the COVID situation. Uh, we are projecting maybe uh, 14 to 18 left turns at that intersection, which is again is about one every three minutes. So uh, the increase in queue wouldn't be substantial uh, at that location. Um, maybe one third to half of those cars would come off the, the ramp and cut across traffic. Um, Yep, not a significant number. Uh, it's a, um, but um, so I, I, I didn't specifically analyze that. The number wasn't very huge, and uh, it uh, didn't seem to be a, a major concern. Uh, in terms of traffic cutting across the front of the site, uh, I'm going to rely on uh, Peter uh, to, to talk about any discussions he's had with the, uh, with the other tenants. But again, um, we're projecting, you know. Uh, maybe 18 to 20 vehicles an hour across the frontage of that site, uh, accessing the other two driveways. Um, you know, it is a shopping center. People entering from one side, going to a tenant on the other side, do use that as a, a drive aisle. Um, I'm not aware of any um, complaints uh, in terms of uh, conflicts in that area currently. So I, I don't expect it to be exacerbated much. And um, your third question was uh, turning left out of the shopping center and going to then making the right onto 15. Uh, again, capacity analysis haven't been done because of the, the lack of uh, available count data. But uh, again, the, uh, the volume of traffic from the shopping center uh, 
it, it's not significantly different than what was reviewed and approved for previous applications. And we're adding not very much to it. So uh, I anticipate that uh, levels of service will be uh, acceptable at those locations. Okay. Peter? Yeah, like I said, I, I didn't really anticipate this being like a huge traffic generator. I'm just curious about those three items. I, I wish I had more information for you, but uh, mm -hmm. I haven't been able to do a traffic count in, well, since January of this year, so. Yeah. Excuse me, George Oikel here. Has uh, D, does DOT uh, review this kind of work with you or not? OSTA is going to do it. Yes, uh, this center operates under a major traffic generator certificate. So any change in use or any expansion uh, requires further review by, by the state. E e and also, have you taken into consideration there are significant vacancies in the southern part of the shopping center, of course, that aren't filled at the moment? Yeah, well, well, when the uh, when Oster reviews these things uh, in previous applications, they would have reviewed the trip generation for the entire site. Right. Um, right. And this doesn't add much to it. Doesn't add much to it. And our application, yeah. again, to them, because we're only asking for a change of what was previously approved, uh, we've presented to them the difference in trip generation between the pharmacy and the fast food use at this location. Okay. And that's what they'll be reviewing. And they're, are they going to review it? It, it's, coming it, it has been submitted, and uh, we have yet to receive any questions or comments from them. What's that mean? I mean, I get you traffic. Your engineers can talk this way, but I'm it's, not a traffic engineer, so I have to ask you further. What do you mean? If they haven't answered by now, will they probably? They typically take between four to six weeks uh, to make comments. And, Are they uh, slow now with the COVID thing? They have slowed down with the COVID because uh, no one's working in the DOT building at the moment. Uh, so they go one day a week to pick up things that have been submitted. Um, and then they scan them and send them out to people to review. Um, so it, it's a little bit slowed down, but uh, we anticipate that we'll get something from them in the next two weeks or so. And you don't expect it to be serious because of their, it's not a big traffic generator okay I, is that right I, that's right i don't expect mm -hmm. it to because they, they generally they generally don't uh, uh the different levels of review and we fall below the uh we're very low on it because of the small increase in traffic okay. so we i expect very little comment i i have another question okay so i i mean um there is, there is a popular draw to Popeyes. Um, there isn't one already in town. Uh, where, is, um, where is the closest one? I don't know if anyone has offhand an answer to the next closest Popeyes. Flatbush Avenue. So, I mean, I was just, I mean, I, I just think of this lot, you know, historically, um, you know, the exit points of this lot, I guess my point is, you know, it's not it's not the easiest lot to get out of. Um, it's very easy to get into, not the easiest to get out of. Um, I know you don't anticipate a lot of traffic. Um, so that's just kind of just that's where I'm kind of hung up on. What I'm hung up on here. Yeah, I mean, this is this is probably more <laughs> than than I should tell you, but uh, you know, the the two Popeyes closest to here, I thing around Flatbush Avenue in Hartford and that's a nightmare to get into because it's in the Walmart Plaza there you know with a couple of hairpin turns and you know significant kind of conflicting crossing traffic to get back onto the 84 exit and the other one is on Spencer Street just over the line into Manchester and it shares its driveway with a with a motel and there's Kind of a big long queue around it and when you get to the end of the or the exit from the drive through you're basically at the stoplight and you're at the mercy of all of the uh, traffic coming out of the site so um you know frankly i i agree that it's not ideal but it, it's better than the other two that are you know within 10 miles of here as far as um you know kind of rigorous 
traffic movements to get in and out of a shopping center. No, I mean, I, I agree, Rich. Um, you know, the, the few that I've been to, I've had like the similar experience, but um, yeah. Um, it's definitely an improvement, but um, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, do we have any other traffic questions or do you want me to move on for now? No, I think that's enough for now. Okay. All right, so um, we're gonna move into the architectural uh, plans before I have our architect, Robert, um, jump into the presentation. I did uh, just wanted to put on the screen one of uh, the floor plan. Um, so the, the south side of the building, which faces kind of interior to the site is on the bottom of the screen here. It's our main entrance side, which I'm uh, highlighting here with this red arrow. Uh, when you walk in straight ahead is the sales area. Um, you have your dining area to the front um, or the Silas Dean side of the building, rather the west side. And of course, outside the dining room is our outdoor patio, um, which we have. And then in the back, um, you're seeing the drive through area, which is on that north side of the building and all the storage and prep rooms are also in the rear. And we have um, access um, out the rear um, of the building, that east side um, for deliveries, um, et cetera. So I'm going to go down to the next slide, which is um, Robert's going to go through. And I just did want to note, we finished up with Drac this afternoon. At, they actually held a special meeting for us today at noon. Um, they did approve our revised plans. They had asked us um, to revise some of the materials that we had showed originally. Um, specifically, they wanted us to eliminate EFIS from the building. Um, so Popeyes was able to rework their design and Robert can discuss um, some of the things that um, we ended up changing and Drac did um, approve the uh, revised plans which are in the PowerPoint. So Robert, do you wanna go through the elevations? Good evening, everybody. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, this building and this footprint are of the newest prototype that uh, Popeyes has. Um, as Megan mentioned, we made changes, significant changes to the finishes already on the building. Um, prior to Drax comments, we had a building that was 80% EFIS and just two areas accented with brick, which were the drive-through and the entrance. Um, the side entrance and then the front was has the wood siding underneath the window area but after their comments and reviewing some things uh, we also as I said this is the newest prototype for Popeyes there the prototype is evolving slightly as we go along we're tweaking things so there's a group of us that um, also work with the designers in Popeyes. And one of the things we all weren't very comfortable with was the wainscoting um, going right down to the soil in EFIS. And they just approved before Thanksgiving that we could change that out to brick. And they actually substituted a actual brick with a uh, gray brick finish rather than painting it brick because nobody wanted to do that. It's a maintenance night nightmare. So um, this is actually the first building that we know of that is getting the full brick wainscoting. So the entire perimeter of the building will be brick wainscoting and it'll be gray except for the standard uh, brick as I previously mentioned by the drive through and the entrance which will be the red brick. I believe we have a picture in the uh, deck later we could yeah. show you. Um, the other change that we did per their request was changing the EFIS to a hardy panel, a white hardy panel uh, clapboard. So it's uh, your normal six inch exposure clapboard, but it is a hardy panel, which is pre-finished in the white color, which is the color scheme they wanted. And uh, it'll be trimmed out with hardy trim. All these materials are no maintenance. They're don't need to be painted. Uh, they need to be cleaned. They need to be installed correctly, which there's a specific uh, reason and uh, details that we uh, have to incorporate. But um, this is a very low maintenance building. Uh, it, again, as far as prototype goes, we'll be bringing you the latest and greatest. And thanks to your uh, review committee, it's updated to hopefully 
as they agreed, hopefully you agree, uh, to be more in kind with other properties you'll find in your area. Um, inside, uh, every store gets decorated and has an interior layout that's sent off to their interior seating and decor. They're all pretty much the same. They get tweaked slightly just for layout and coordination, but uh, that is all so get it going through a whole new prototype process and is updated. So if you've guys seen any Popeyes that are out there built in the last few years, these will be updated from that. Um, it's just lucky 2020 is the year that they were changing everything. Um, this is the drive through elevation. So that large brick spans that you see in the center will be the red brick. Um, the drive through window will have a awning over it. And towards the right hand side of your screen is um, towards the entrance and you'll have your gray brick wainscoting. You'll have the um, clapboard above it and you see the signage on the front tower. Towards the back of the building, you have again the brick wainscoting, the <clears throat> excuse me, Hardy Powell uh, clapboard and their traditional um, Popeye's uh, shutters that are their decorative shutters on the building. If you go to the next slide, I think you have the, uh, this is the back. Again, not too impressive. Um, the cooler box is finished to match the building. So it'll be uh, a white grayish uh, pre-finished pre metal uh, finish of the cooler box. Um, all the roof, uh, roof drains will be piped in and collected as the engineer previously uh, indicated. And you could see the, uh, again, the two brick elements, the drive-through and the entrance, and of course the uh, brick wainscoting by the back door. The little fenced in area right by the back door. Outside of the uh, building, we keep the CO tanks and the grease recovery tanks, which are all hard piped and connected. And the, the reason that for that is so that they're isn't a kid with a mop bucket dragging a bucket of grease across your parking lot into a grease receptacle anywhere on the site. It all gets uh, hard piped right in. A truck comes and takes the grease, connects to it, and sucks it right out of the tank, uh, eliminating uh, possible spillage. Um, and the CO is uh, obviously there for the soda system. And again, that's something that a truck comes, connects to it, and fills up. So nothing getting traipsed across the parking lot. Can we go to the other side? This is the main uh, view that you'll see when you pull into the lot and come in. It'll be what's facing the rest of the uh, center. And you have all the elements on this face of the uh, building also. Again, the brick wainscoting across the whole spans of the building, the clapboard, uh, the white clapboard, pre-finished clapboard above, um, the awnings, the canopies over the windows and doors, and again the signage at the front, and there, love my chicken on, I love that chicken on the side. That's pretty much the building. Yeah, and I'll go. The next slide I think has some pictures of materials here. Yes, the uh, lower left is the uh, uh, Hardy Plank Cedar Select. That is a white. The picture obviously shows it a little more grayed out, but it is, it's a white finish. The uh, water table um, wings coating of the brick, the gray brick, that is a Glengarry brick. The front elevation there, uh, right under the front windows, that is a uh, pre-finished um, panelized system for the wood uh, look under there. Um, the next picture is the red brick again at the drive-through element. Great. Now you bit, you went, we were through, the, you went to our planning and design review mm -hmm. subcommittee twice, yeah. once, twice? Twice. Today was the last day? Today was the last day, correct. And it's all reflected in here. Are there comments are reflected? Correct. Yes, we got um, a, a list they of say comments. say anything that we need to hear? They said thank you. That's what they said to us today. They, they said we were very responsive and they were appreciative. Thank you. We did have a list from the first meeting, and we, I pretty much think we uh, 
got everything, yeah. every one of our comments back to them within a week's time. And uh, as Megan said today, they appreciated the fact that we addressed everything to their liking. Good. Thank you. All right. So this is um, a slide that shows the lighting plan. Um, we're installing lights. I've sort of circled them in red so they're a little bit easier to see. Um, and they have a, a mounting height of 20 feet above grade. And I have a picture in the lower right corner that shows what they look like. But, uh, you know, full cutoff fixture with LED light bulbs. What's in the rest of the parking lot? Um, Peter, can you speak to that? I think it's a, a similar um, shoebox type fixture. There's shoebox down. There's shoebox down lights, but they're metal halide fixtures. And our goal is to change them out to LED fixtures, which means actually means changing the whole head, and and we're doing them as they burn out. Yeah. How how high are those poles? Uh, thirty feet, I believe. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, the next, the next couple of slides, or no, the next slides have uh, the signage details. These are the same images that we saw um, on the elevations. Um, the, uh, uh, the entry side, which is the south side facing on the rest of the center, they have the love that chicken um, sign, which is uh, flush mounted letters, um, 65.41 square feet. Also on that side in the, the little tower you have there, their um, illuminated logo, which is about uh, seven square feet. Um, on the Silas Dean side, this is the sign that you're seeing facing Silas Dean, 39 square, 0 0.07 square feet. And on the drive-through side, you just have um, the, the their circle logo. So I'll just quick go back to the elevator. They're brown and lit up, is that correct? Sure, so, um, and uh, this, the circle sign, which is on the south side, and also on the north side, those are lit up. Yes. That's and then this sign obviously is illuminated, illuminated channel letters. Um, and the goosenecks also. And the goosenecks as well. And what about the love that chicken, Robert? The love that chicken is not. Okay, so that's just illumin. That's just painted on, or just letters, not illuminated. Yes, correct. Okay. All right. I could do without that. <laughs> um, and then I think just for my last slide here, I just have a couple of details of the clearance uh, bars. Um, this is the fencing that's going around the patio, which is located on the front of the building. Um, I think that's my last slide. So we did today submit um, a list of responsive comments to Peter uh, Peter's memo. Um, so Peter, did um, did the commission see that? Is that something we should go through right yeah, now? It came in late this afternoon, so yeah. I don't, it has not been uh, forwarded to the commission members. So if you could walk through sure. the responses, that would be helpful. Okay. Peter, do you want to um, go through that list? Or sure. Peter LaPointe? Or do you want me to? Uh, more, than, more than happy to. Okay. Uh, the first comment was about the uh, approval block on the drawings and asked that we add an, uh, an expiration date, which we said we would do. Uh, the second comment asked us to add the approval block on the title sheet, uh, which uh, Dana will do. Uh, there was a question about the existing site lights. The existing site lights on the property will remain. <clears throat> the lights uh, Megan just showed you were specific to this tenant's parking lot and their building. Uh, uh, Peter asked if, if uh, any remediation was uh, required because of prior uses on the property. Uh, there have been a number of investigations over the years by environmental consultants, uh, soil tests and groundwater tests. Uh, no remediation on this property is, is required. Uh, uh, questions regarding the layout. Uh, We've reduced the existing paved surface uh, along the Jordan Lane side, and we've uh, we've added a landscape strip, uh, lawn, shrubs, and trees, street trees along that whole side. How many? 
uh, four plus we just added another one today down by the dumpster enclosure. So there's a total of five street trees. Is that all of the trees along here or shrubs? On that side, that's all the deciduous. Right, that's all of the deciduous trees. We also added evergreens. There's uh, clusters, uh, two, two or three clusters of evergreens plus the arborvitae around the dumpster enclosure. The, uh, your standard of 50 foot on center would have required four trees. So the, the fifth tree is above and beyond. Thank you. Uh, as for uh, 88 parking, there was a question about uh, updating the parking table, which uh, we will do. Uh, it has been updated to the uh, shopping center standard, actually, of four per thousand. Uh, uh, the ADA requirements for lots from 200 to 1,000 cars would be 1%. Uh, that would be four point something or five parking spaces. When the Popeyes is finished, we will have 10 parking spaces on the overall shopping center that are uh, accessible spaces. Uh, the building dimensions will be added to the, the plan. Uh, they don't appear on the site plan right now. It's just a gross floor area, but we'll add the dimensions of the building. Uh, the proposed building is 2,454 square feet. There was a conflict with uh, the first iteration of the traffic uh, report, and that has been updated, and OSTA has been notified, and I think your, your town engineer was also noticed this morning. Uh, if I'm understanding you correctly, Peter, you are asking us to replace the stop sign on the shopping center driveway going out to Jordan Lane. And we will do that. Uh, Excuse me, how about this corner walkway? Is which that be handicapped? Which will, uh, there's the walkway on which? Yeah, up to the corner of Jordan Lane and Silas Dean. The, uh, the, there is a sidewalk along Jordan Lane that connects to the on-site sidewalk adjacent to the, our Jordan Lane driveway. And we will add a, a pavement marking crosswalk from the end of that sidewalk uh, to the sidewalk uh, adjacent okay. to the existing building. Yeah, let okay. me go. That, so that suffices for something not being on the corner. Okay, thank yeah. you. Right here, Peter, you're talking about? Yes. That's actually a brand new sidewalk at that end where your cursor is right now. That was put in when, when Price Wright added that uh, loading dock on that side and changed that parking layout. Uh, there, uh, there were some dimensions that needed to be added to the zoning table. We will add them. Uh, uh, the, uh, the next item is the question that was just asked about uh, handicapped accessibility uh, and basically pedestrian accessibility uh, through that, that side of the site. And that's, that's how that will be achieved. Uh, we are asking for outside seating uh, at the, the, on the front patio of this restaurant. Uh, the tenant, because of COVID, has now indicated uh, uh, the probability that they will use that. Um, although I think the, the restaurant, like so many of the fast food restaurants we have, will be drive through driven for a while. Uh, Wait a minute. This, this right here is the handicapped access from the shopping center, right? What, what are you pointing to? I'm, po I'm pointing to the lower half of the site here. Yeah, about right in there, that, that one. Now, so that, where does that that's come from? Handicapped access, uh, handicapped parking for the Popeye's restaurant. Right. How do you get over from the shopping center? Over here, right, Peter? You're coming coming down. Jordan. Yeah, that, si that sidewalk has a handicap ramp right there. We're crossing to the sidewalk here. Right. right? We're going down the sidewalk here. I don't have an interconnecting crosswalk there. We could add a crosswalk there. I think it might be a good idea. That's a very busy intersection. It will, we hope so. I uh, hope so too. <laughs> uh, a crosswalk there is not a bad idea. Uh, 
I'm almost wondering, Dana, if you're still on, I'm almost wondering if the crosswalk shouldn't be dropped down uh, I'm here. along that sidewalk so it lines up with the handicapped offloading area on the Popeye site somehow. It's not quite direct, but it might be a cleaner, cleaner transition across the parking, across the drive aisle. To, um, we could move the stop, stop bar back so that the crosswalk would, would go perpendicular to the, to the drive aisle. So what you mean? Yep. And then, okay. and, and then from there, would, would you put a sidewalk across that island or would I, you? I think we'd have to, and then you push, you can't have them walking in the driveway and then we'd yeah. have to push, uh, yeah, then a perpendicular uh, walk uh, going across the island and then change that that um, that uh, pedestrian uh, walkway from the handicapped spaces, you know, uh, rotate it so it's perpendicular to the drive through lane. And then that would seem to like, yeah, yeah, a cleaner look. Yeah. All right. All right. So, That's something we could address, I think, as a condition of approval. It seems like there's an option there. I don't have a problem with that at all. Yeah, if the if the town planner thinks that's uh, would be an improvement, uh, then then I think uh, we could uh, we could agree to that as a condition. That with him and the town engineer. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we want to make um, like if you're going to make that a crosswalk, it's not to introduce anything more complicated to it, but potentially making that stop controlled instead of people being able to freely take that right around the price right property. Just to give them something to stop at that corner and then take the right just in case somebody's yeah, yeah just just in yeah. case somebody's if, if we're going to start inviting people to use that, then we should protect them. Peter, you okay with that? Yes, I am. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, very good. Uh, we talked about the, the pavement marking also being added down below. Uh, Peter had asked about bicycle uh, parking and we will provide a bicycle rack uh, on the site. I, I don't know where at this point, but uh, our, our designer, Bill Maxwell is a cyclist. So we we traditionally let him tell us where he would normally park his bike, so. You have, nice, you have a nice hatched area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, dumpster enclosure. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, the last comment related, two comments related to landscaping. Uh, one was asking about our, our uh, compliance with the, the standards in the ordinance, the zoning regulations. Uh, and we do show four street trees. Now we show five that changed this afternoon, uh, 50 feet apart along the Jordan Lane. 30% uh, of the development parcel is landscaped. And I think the requirement needs to be 15%. Uh, we have added three uh, trees in the perimeter landscape buffer. Uh, there was already a fourth. So we've got uh, four all tall. Uh, the one your cursor's on now got moved this morning because it, it's, it was sitting on top of uh, uh, the storm line. Uh, and then the, the uh, uh, last comment was related to waivers. And I think uh, if, I'm, if I'm understanding this correctly, the, the waivers we need to ask for are the, uh, the, the, the islands within the parking lot and the, the tree that would go on that island. Uh, and and uh, and I guess the uh, that would also include the terminal terminal islands at the end of each park row. I suspect. Where? Yeah, per the regs, we're supposed to have um, a landscaped island at the end of every row of parking, like we have here. Um, but that's something down here that, as Dana mentioned early in their because presentation, of drainage issue. right, yeah. and the flood zone issue that we couldn't put there. So that's part of the waiver we're requesting. Okay, I think that was your the last comment, right, Peter? Yes, it was. 
Uh, the engineer's comments, I think, uh, were his comment one and two basically related to what uh, he and Dana had agreed to at the wetlands uh, commission meeting, which was they would get together and resolve the, uh, the, the infiltration of the roof drainage in a way that was acceptable to Derek. Uh, and the, the, his, the re his remaining comments were basically tweaks to the drawing, the set of drawings. You didn't have. Excuse me. Problem with any of them. Sorry, could you repeat that? And you didn't have a problem with any. No, know? we did not. Comments. All right, I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> I don't know if there's <laughs> another question or not, um, but I guess I'll just, just jump in and say that um, I also just wanna put into the record that we did do the required mailing um, to the abutters. And we also did post the sign um, for the public hearing as well. So we did comply with both of those um, portions um, of the regulation. Um, we do meet um, all the criteria for the issuance of a special permit um, in accord with the regulations. Um, and we're happy to you know, answer any additional questions that the commission has. Uh, but I think we've gone through um, the pre presentation that we prepared tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I guess if you wanna stop sharing the screen then. Sure. Kind of go back to seeing whether anybody has questions. All right, any uh, any commissioners have questions for the uh, for the applicant or anybody on their team? Yeah, um, I had one quick question. Um, looking at the site plan, one thing you mentioned is that a majority of your customers will be drive through, yet I see no um, trash containers or receptacles within the parking lot area. Will there be ones located there? To deal with the on-site trash created through drive throughs parking? I believe, um, I do know that there is a trash, um, a trash can that is, I guess, westerly of the drive through exit. So almost like you could get your food, um, pull forward, and then there's a, a, um, a trash can right on your left. Um, Robert, do you know? They put any hey Megan, this this is Ed. If I if I could oh, add, hey. um, I, we do have a, a trash can with a drive-through extender on the drive-through side, like you're saying for the cars when they pull out. Mm -hmm. And we also have one on the uh, entrance, the main entrance side. Okay. I was okay. going to say that's usually laid out once we uh, lay out the uh, seating in the patio area to make sure we accommodate all um, ADA access through the area, and then we'll lay out the garbage as a result of where it can fit. Okay, I just one because sometimes you when you go to a restaurant to do a lot of drive through, you see bags all over the parking lot, and because people don't walk sure. back to the walk walk back to the restaurant. Understand? It will be addressed, and they will be on site. Okay. Any other members of the commission have questions? Okay. Um, keeping in mind this is a public hearing, uh, are there any members of the public that would like to speak on this application? Anybody? All right. If not, um, once again, do anybody on the commission have questions for the applicant? Peter, do you think that uh, the lost him again? Lost. Him. Can you repeat the question? Discussion sufficiently answered the the questions that you had. It's catching up. I think I know what you're. Um, 
So I, 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 <laughs> I think if, uh, I mean, I, a lot of the outstanding um, staff comments, I think can simply be uh, addressed with a condition that the final plans will be revised to the satisfaction of both the town planner uh, and the town engineer. Um, so I think uh, unless you guys have a material problem with, with some of the answers, I think that can be handled uh, that way. You had the other comment about adding the um, stop sign and the crosswalk by the handicap uh, parking area. So I would add that as a condition once again to the satisfaction of um, town staff. Uh, there's the fourth condition on the on providing the uh, waiver uh, on the landscaping, and I think I think that covers it. They did um, just for the record. There's a copy of the wetlands approval um, in the uh, packet. Uh, the design review approval was uh, issued today. Obviously, we didn't uh, get you a, a letter uh, to that effect, but I will testify um, that I did speak with Denise Bradley and. She attended that meeting and it was approved without conditions. So the revised plans reflect um, the uh, comments previously made by the members of the design review uh, committee. So I think um, with those four conditions, it at least covers the things that I, I heard tonight or are still outstanding. Okay, thank you. All right, one last chance, anybody have any questions the yeah so i don't know if he's going to is he is it, do you do we think he's asking we'll if anybody would hearing. like to motion to close the hearing? I would like to motion to close the hearing. Yeah, that, that was what I was trying to ask. <laughs> so move. I'll second yeah. that. All right. Seconded by Mike. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, hearing is closed. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve with conditions laid out by Peter. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay, uh, Dave seconded. Um, Peter, could you go over the, the conditions again, just so that everybody's clear on what they are? Sure. Uh, first uh, condition is the final plans are revised to reflect uh, any of the outstanding comments made by uh, the town engineer. Second, uh, similar condition um, that the plans are revised to reflect the uh, outstanding town planner comments. Uh, number three, uh, plans are revised to the satisfaction of town staff to add uh, crosswalk painted crosswalk, potential sidewalks, uh, stop uh, sign and stop bars uh, in and around the um, uh, handicap uh, parking uh, areas as illustrated on the plans. And then lastly, that the requested landscape waiver uh, is approved uh, based on the, the uh, site uh, plan as it was laid out. Adaptable, fine. Okay, thank you. All right, any discussion? Will the outdoor seating be something the staff addresses when they bring it to, if, if they decide to do it? Yeah, we'll just need a, I was at the time of the building permit um, details, we'll, we'll review that. But I, it, I just wanted it, the record to reflect that they did uh, request uh, uh, that outdoor seating. It was unclear on, on the earlier uh, plans. So, uh, but the staff can work out uh, those details. Okay. Thank you. All right, any well, other questions? Peter, George, uh, you, you still have the governor's approval for those, that kind of thing. So you don't even need us to comment on it, right? <laughs> and my staff. Well, I, the governor's order isn't going to last for uh, forever. So um, <laughs> these guys wanted uh, <laughs> we can, we can hope. 
the yeah. permanent outdoor seating, not yeah. the temporary outside outside seating. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay, the permanent. I'm sorry, I thought yeah. you meant for the COVID. Yeah, and I don't think they'll have this open before February 9th, so. Okay, any other questions or comments? If not, uh, all in favor of approval with the stipulations, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you very much. When, when are you going to put it in? <laughs> if the weather holds, they'll start immediately. That would be good. We had another restaurant <clears throat> approved last year. You didn't go ahead. Ah. So, and it seems ready, difficult. Now, so that's why we want to know. We have a few things to work out with the prototype, but we'll be preparing the CDs at ASAP. Good. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Next item. Public hearing application 2061-20-Z, uh, Spiro and Julia Colores seeking a special permit in accordance with section 52F4 of the Weathersfield zoning regulations uh, for a change of use from mercantile to assembly and associated site improvements at 263 Main Street. Um, Brian? I'm going to recuse myself from this, so I will turn it over to you. All right. Uh, would the applicant like to give a brief overview of the application? Uh, you're still on mute. Okay. There you go. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we did provide a narrative, so you guys have a little bit of an overview, but I will go over that with everyone right now. Um, so we are basically trying to just revamp what we've already got going on. And I'm just gonna read this so that I don't mess anything up, but um, our plan for the interior is to expand the cafe and coffee juice smoothie area to allow for more equipment a better workflow and a more efficient use of space. Well, I guess I should just preempt this all with the main part of the meeting, I think is to change from our current zoning, which is mercantile to assembly. So just to put that in there. Um, we'll be uh, bumping out our front counter, adding- me, May I ask a question, Megan? Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, what is the difference in that zoning? And Peter, maybe you could answer the-, the uh, uh, why why uh, this difference down there? I mean, I know it, it doing a lot, but why the zoning issue and why are we approving it? So uh, George, it's, it's not changing in the zoning, it's changing in the use of the interior uh, spaces of the building um, to um, basically uh, uh, ex ex uh, expand the, the levels of activity that can occur there. Well, previously, your previous approvals were limited to certain activities. This particular approval, the, the main uh, change is uh, the ability to have basically a place of assembly where more folks can gather and uh, enjoy the business. Therefore, like out in a greenhouse and stuff like that yeah. and outside. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so maybe I misspoke. It's not a change of zoning, it's a change of use. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, so our plan is to basically just be revamping and expanding on what we're already doing. Um, we'll be adding uh, a lot to our interior kitchen space, uh, adding pastry and, dis and deli display cases, new equipment for our coffee station, um, improved station where we can better display all that we offer so our employees can have more space to work efficiently. We'll also be adding a bar area with counter seating, adding some local beers, fun wines, and a few cocktails to our current drink menu options. Um, our kitchen prep area, we'll be making room for a walk-in cooler. We'll also have a new hotline. Um, that'll be just so that we can expand our, our menu offerings. 
We'll be adding more bakery equipment, some better ovens, just better, bettering what we're already doing now. Um, our new hotline will, as our plan is now, be, be where the current bathrooms are. So we'll be moving the bathrooms to the other side of the building and also adding um, a couple more bathrooms to meet the proper building code with our change of use. Uh, we're hoping that the greenhouse area can be converted into a three season seating area with a sliding barn door that will open up into the main space. Um, this will allow for more light and airflow. In the greenhouse, we'll be adding a new concrete floor, fixing the doors and just giving the space a bit of a facelift. Um, in the market, we will reconfigure a bit, but just accommodate our indoor seating as well as the current display of, dis of seeds and all of our market items, grocery and retail. We'll be adding three new unisex bathrooms on the current main level. And then um, on the current main level, there's a sunroom, which the floor is a little bit lower than the rest of the space. So we'll be getting a new, a new floor that kind of raises up to match the elevation of the rest of the room. We'll be adding a wheelchair lift to that area so that the front space is handicap accessible. Um, and in that front room, we'll be adding a new unisex ADA bathroom. Um, and then also in that front room, there's two doors that open to the exterior. They currently open in, so we'll be reconfiguring them to open out that for points of egress. Yeah, that's the with the code and, and mm -hmm. allowing for points of egress and the number of people that we want to be able to be in that room. And part of that is just reconfiguring slightly the the landing that those doors open out into. Um, so let's see. I mean, we do have some exterior work planned, although that's not like in the plans immediately, but it's general, general repairs, fixing sections of the roof, um, broken windows, things like that. Yeah, just up, just upgrading some, some areas of, especially the back barn area where there's some broken parts. There's some things that we just need to upgrade. Um, we, in previous meetings, we have come up with some kind of traffic flow issues with the neighbors. So we're working with the town engineer. We, we met with Derek and we've actually ordered some signs to kind of help, I think. The traffic flow. Yeah, it's a, it's a traffic flow issue. It's minor, but I think if we were, were able to just kind of point people in the right direction. So what, what we do is still a far, problem with the traffic flow out there? there the, the complaint has been that um, people, um, it's not, um, it's, it's not super obvious that there, that it's a one way parking lot and that the parking lot at the other end kind of dog legs left for that being an exit. So maybe what, you're right. Maybe, I've walked through it and yeah. Maybe, yeah. So maybe what we improved that a little bit. We've, we've ordered. Obvious. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is that, uh, we've ordered the first round of signs. We put one up, the other ones, they were a little too small. They didn't seem like they would kind of make the impact that we needed to. So we're just kind of uh, reviewing some other signs. We'll probably have them ordered next week and we'll just go through until we find the right ones that kind of clearly state, you know, the direction and the exit. Um, yep, yeah. and then uh, just to kind of recap everything with the change of use from assembly from mercantile to assembly, the parking calculations change, the bathroom calculations change. So um, we know in town, you know, parking can be an issue. So we um, took it upon ourselves to just kind of do a little bit of a survey. And we currently have uh, 26 spaces on premise. Two of them are handicapped. Um, we, let's see, my notes are a little... So in the church lot across the street, we have an agreement with them and there's 28 immediate spots right across our street that are in between, there's like a brick house and a yellow house. I don't know what you technically call that lot over there, but the there's, garden. there's another 28 spots that are basically available to us at any time if we have to have an event. Um, and then also just the, the, the street spots. So street parking, from 
from Harford Ave. Ave to Church Street, there's 38 speed spots. spots on that street. So we just wanted to kind of make a note of, of all those spots and um, trying to see if there's any other points I want to get on here. Um, I guess with, with the parking, um, I guess our occupancy load is going up because of the change of use. And I think we're somewhere around 300 people with the change of use. But one of the things, and we uh, both of our architects are here to speak of this, so they can kind of help me with all this. But one of the things with this is that at any given time, we're not going to have 300 people in the building. That's just because it's a huge space and that's what could be there. Right. So we're, you know, we're thinking, oh, we might have an event for 50 people, but then we might also have our normal business with, which is another hundred, you know? So it's like, I can't imagine we would ever have this 348 occupancy load at any given time. Um, so with the parking, we're just kind of trying to work that out and talk to you guys about what, um, what kind of is acceptable and what works and what makes sense. So um, I, I just have a quick question. The parking, so there's the letter that outlines the need for the parking. I'm seeing 81 spaces. You have 23 plus two. Uh, just heard you say 26. Yeah, yeah, we actually have 26. I think there's okay. a typo in one of those, yeah. No problem. Um, but uh, one of them that's like coming out, you're gonna have designated spots now for, for people to get in and, and take out, like just because of the increased production. Is that what I'm seeing according to this letter? So you're gonna designate some, there's like three three spaces for takeout I was seeing. I was just, I'm curious oh, yeah. if you're taking some of those on site and making it more accessible for people who are just going in to grab food and leaving because that's gonna be a little bit more of a business model of yours with, with this expansion potentially. But we currently have, I believe the first five spots when you come in, first four spots, I'm sorry, um, designated as, as pickup spots. Um, okay. Oftentimes people, people do park there um, if there's no other spots available, but it's very rare that we have more than one or two cars at any given time that are waiting for food to be picked up at this current time. Um, it's something that we put into place for, for COVID when we, when we launched our online ordering that didn't, that didn't exist for us pre COVID. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a working process for, for that, for sure. I think when, you know, just in general for the meeting itself, I think we tend to talk about parking, obviously quite a bit in this area and, you know, there's, we, we've, we've talked about it. We all know there's not enough parking, but we know that on, on site, I should say, like we all know that like pretty much any business that comes in doesn't have enough like parking right in front of their area or on a parking lot. Um, but I think when we did the study, um, when was that done, Peter? Was that last year? Somewhere? Earlier, yeah. Uh, yes, not earlier this year, sorry. So the, the findings of that were that we had ample parking in the vicinity. Is that like, like is that how we came away from that? And we, we would then do our best to accommodate people as close to the business as possible. However, there's plenty on, you know, in the, in the vicinity of the, of Main Street, and then we can you know, the businesses will have to lure their customers in from afar as opposed to like directly in front of their building. That's, that's the general takeaway that, and that's the, the mood of the town. Yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, oh, sorry. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. That's, that's the mood of me. Uh, so it like, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll throw that out there uh, just in case uh, there's a further parking discussion. Later. No, the parking study indicated there's, uh, plenty of available parking, um, primarily if you factor in first church parking lot uh, as these applicants are, and you factor Specifically in for them. Yeah, that's right. parking lot and some other parking lots, as long as they get used, 
um, by people, then there's not an on-street um, or off-street parking issue. And I, there's a letter in the in the correspondence from Todd Willard at First Church indicating uh, that he's uh, we're kind of finally negotiating some of the terms of that, um, but he's certainly making that parking available uh, to the uh, patrons of the uh, the market uh, uh, as long as you know it, it's all about making sure the businesses also encourage their uh, employees uh, as well as their patrons uh, to be aware of those offsite spaces and, and use them. Um, that's really the, the, the bottom line here. So going for, and I think in the, in the correspondence with this applicant, they've uh, uh, agreed and are willing to notify their patrons uh, for large events about the availability of that parking lot. So it's all about people using it, however. Great, thank you. Yep. And Comstock, Peter, is not encouraging activity uh, on Sunday mornings. I'll let, them, I'll let them answer that one. No, uh, what, it's in there and yeah. the, the material. Yeah. Well, well, as far as, yeah, Todd Willard was saying that that lot is not as available on Sunday mornings. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. So, right. so if we were going to do an event on a Sunday, we would. That's a big lot anyway. You're right. Yeah. We would encourage it to be maybe, you know, after the, the church kind of service is over. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have a tendency of not booking large events during Sunday mornings or Saturday mornings anyway because it's such a busy time for our business that it's counterproductive to have. It's it's hard to pull it off during that time. So we have a tendency of scheduling those things much later. And some of the letters, one of them I know that were sent supporting you. Uh, a lot of them from all Weathersfield people, but. A lot of them supporting you uh, said, uh, and one or two of them, I think, suggested let the people walk if they need to. And, uh, and that happens in other parts of uh, congested areas. Mystic. Yeah, I think, I think there is a great thing in town where if we were to direct people to the first, first church lot and the Keeney Center parking yeah. lot, if, if we're able to let them know that those parking spots are there people will park there and walk absolutely they'll how are you going to do that letting know yeah. signage uh, a part of your our business personally yeah, yeah. Signage we could do. Or, or, suggestions on the menus suggestions on the websites um yeah i mean we, there's a lot of things we can do internally like you know putting correspondence like uh suggestions on on our website and our on our menus in in the building itself and it also presents opportunity for people to stroll past or walk past businesses that they may not have seen or actually been by before. Yeah, um, good so idea. Walking, walking isn't such a bad thing. I think it would be great too. More too, people if, are walking now than ever. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But I do think it'd be great if the town put some signs up too, you know, for, for encouraging people to park in those spots. Okay, so Peter, was there anything, um, I was reading through some of the materials, I realized it was a pretty lengthy uh, permitting history, but anything specific related to this, there was, so there's the parking, is that, there was, there was the parking and then there was like the internal facilities of the building itself, like was the parking the only thing that we wouldn't be meeting? Yes, I mean they're not expanding the building. They're not, um, you know, doing any of the normal uh, site, site improvements that you would be uh, commenting on. They're not uh, changing the parking um, from uh, as it exists today. So it really uh, boils down to just increasing the intensity um, of the use of the of the business. Therefore, you know, generating more of a parking demand. But I think you've got. Um, adequate information uh, in the file indicating that, you know, there's available offsite parking uh, public as well as uh, the agreement with First Church. And just for the record, we're waiting uh, for First Church to kind of sign out, sign off on our memorandum of agreement. Uh, within that agreement, we had uh, proposed that we would uh, install uh, some signage identifying that lot as sort of semi-public parking, uh, but we're 
and we're just waiting for them to agree to the final the terms of, of the agreement. So, um, so we're certainly willing to do that uh, at the uh, at the appropriate time to make uh, folks aware of that uh, parking un under whatever terms and conditions the church, you know, would would expect of us. So. Okay. Any other members of the commission with any questions? Yeah, a couple of them, Mr. Chairman. Two two items uh, in our materials. One question was your outdoor table service is is allowed or isn't allowed and why? Or the applicant, I don't know, there's something like that in there. I got the a table service in the back. Are you talking about currently or the proposed? I don't so, know, proposed, I guess. You okay, know, so, so there can't be any outdoor table service or? There, there, there can be. Um, you know, right now, how, how we run our business now is um, it's counter service. And so people are taking their food from the counter and they're bringing their, they're going to their table and sitting down eating. Um, things may change when we have like a, a designated, um, more d defined designated patio area when we do start serving alcohol so that we would have probably table service at that point. So that people aren't just like strolling on and off the property with alcohol. So that would be much more defined and uh, possibly that might come later, then. right? Whether it be roped off or fenced in or something like that. So it's it's a bit more. That was why we want to put in as much control as possible. We want to just put in as many controls as possible to make sure that that, that we're the ones yeah. handling the alcohol and serving it to the customer. The other question I had was lighting. Sure. I don't know. I got lighting question mark. Here and I don't want to yeah, <laughs> that's his whole question. Yes, they will have lights. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, you know, are you going to have outdoor lighting? Is it adequate and everything? I mean, Peter, maybe you got to answer that. I don't know. Is that is that something that's related to to this? I think so. I don't know why I would have written it down otherwise. No, when we when we signed our lease. Um, the previous, the previous um, owners of the property, they did install some lighting. They installed some lighting in the front of the building that currently goes over the front uh, to and the front, the front entrance way um, where we are. Not the not the one right on Main Street, but the one that's recessed where our main entrance is. They installed lighting there and on the corner and then down on the barns. Um, so I think it's like a couple corners and then the barn down at the end. Um, if, if the situation, there is always some talk in the past about there is a light post there from a previous back, probably when it was Comstock. Um, it's on the opposite side of the parking lot that shines down. Um, there is conduit going to it um, so that if you had to run wire, you could. But I think that they might have shut that off as a courtesy for the, the neighbors on the other side of that fence. But um, you know, we're certainly willing to put more lighting in to make it safer at nighttime. But well, my you know, question we actually have be, plans for it right now. My question would be: Do you think it's adequate lighting? And if you don't, Peter, do you think there is, or, or the, the town engineer? Uh, there's I think it probably is in there, but I don't know. Um, no, there probably it probably isn't satisfactory to today's standards. But I think um, you know, it's it's all about what they're future plans are for utilizing that outside those outside yeah areas. they're only using the outside and the um, yeah the uh, greenhouse somewhat here but not the rest of the back area and yeah, not, okay yeah so in other words the lighting is adequate for present circumstances and what they're proposing okay fine and i would say it's adequate for what we need right now but yes if we were to Kind of extend the hours a little bit or have outdoor seating into into any you know darker hours we would we would definitely just update it to what it needed to be just come back into us yeah right, so yeah need yep. any other questions from any commission members one, one of the questions i had was about um exterior improvements and you mentioned repairs, repairs to roof and, and some windows. Was there any thought to, to painting the building or, or 
any other exterior improvements? Um, yeah, so um, we are actually in talks with a couple different uh, contractors right now. Um, currently, the, the current kind of siding on the white portions of the building have all been stained. They were stained probably in 2009, I think it was. Um, 2009, maybe, I'm not sure. But um, we are talking to come up with, figure out what the best thing is, whether we paint it or stain it again. But it'll probably, that's probably something we're hoping to do in the spring. Okay. Um, and we're, talk, we're talking to contractors now just about that. Um, the roof and stuff like that, that's right now it's more repairs rather than mm -hmm. replacing the whole thing. You know, we, we're, just, yeah. we're just generating revenue now to do that. But our goal is to replace large section of the roof. But we have, we're just gonna do some um, repairs right now. Um, with other exteriors, there's some like cracked windows that need to be replaced and that we're, we're, we'll be checking that off the list. Um, and then uh, this all, all this stuff has kind of happened simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Once we, once we get going with the, inter with the interior re renovations, we'll be kind of checking some of this, some of this stuff off the list as well. Um, obviously the painting will come later when the weather kind of turns around a bit. Um, in the back where the barns are, the doors, um, even, even though we're not going to be doing um, much inside there at this moment, but like things like replacing the doors that are broken with mm -hmm. the same type of doors, obviously we'd get historical approval before we did anything like that. Um, and repairing whatever siding we could before we replace it. But you know, um, if it's if it's not nice enough to repair or in shape enough to repair, we'll replace it. We kind of have that. Um, we were kind of held to that by the, uh, the SBA kind of situation that we have with the state as well, with the state historical. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so well, yeah. The, the, you're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. The answer, the, answer is the answer is that like we, there's some things we just can't wait to get to We're we're, we're chomping at the bit, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but the answer is yes. Okay. And I think the other question I had, I was taking a look at uh, the proposed plans. Was the gazebo intended to stay in the same location, was that going to be removed? We we didn't have plans to remove it. The only the only thing that if, when we look at the gazebo would be to um, repair repair it. And I mean, I'm not I'm not sure what the pricing on gazebos are nowadays, but uh, the roof on that thing needs to be replaced. And I'm not sure if that's even worth it or if it's worth just replacing the whole thing at okay. that point. I'm not sure how much that would cost, but it, that that's kind of on the list of, of repairs as well. But at the, we weren't considering moving the gazebo, no. Okay. For some reason, I thought it wasn't on the plan anymore. And so that's why I asked. Why I, oh. Okay. But yeah, I, yeah. I might have misread it, you know. Yeah, you know what? I think originally, yeah, because you know what? On the plan, it's, it's a blow up as, of the second story there. It's labeled as garden area. That's yes. that's how, that's because that's how um, the previous owners had all that, those three, the two long triangles in that square as garden space. The okay. gazebo was moved onto that later. Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying that. That's all I have for questions. Any other questions from the commission? Before I move on to any public comment, unless there's uh, any further discussion from the applicant, you mentioned architect potentially, but just wanted to give you guys a chance. Good to um, go, move, move on to public. I think, I think, I think we're okay. Cool. All right, if there's, if there's anybody from the public who wishes to comment, um, seeing one number one, four, five, three, or is that somebody that we know? Tone. I'll ask again, phone number 1453. Got any comments? Just want a sandwich? Nothing? <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, open it up. Any, if anybody else has any other comments uh, before we uh, move on to potentially. Uh... Mr. Chairman, for the uh, uh, record, uh, there were a number of uh, emails from people in town. Right. Most of them complimentary, most of them saying uh, 
there's adequate parking down there and we shouldn't be concerned with it and so forth. But yeah, I was going to run through those real quick. We have. Um, yeah, okay. Enough. If you are. Yeah, uh, um, sorry. I was just trying to give everybody a chance to voice their opinions first and then uh, move on to these. We have do have the correspondence um, for the parking spots. We had, uh, you mentioned um, Todd, I'm looking for his last name, Todd Willard. Uh, you had the correspondence between him saying uh, that, um, you know, you would, you would have less access to the parking lot on your, on Sunday mornings during their services. You also have very delicious sandwiches, according to that email. Um, all right, so you had your response to that, uh, the other emails. We have one here from Kim Wolf, Historic Distance District Coordinator. Uh, thank you for the update. The doors, you are not to use the existing doors and to replace them in kind, which as you just discussed, uh, trying to replace everything you can with something that's either already existing or in kind. Um, Sounds like we're in line with that. Uh, was, was there any other correspondence I, I had to? Yep. Hello, phone number 1453. How's it going? How are you? Good night. Good, good, good night to all the good. commissioners. Julia Spiro, good night. How are you? Hey. Um, I was saying hello earlier. This is Paul Brady at 1618 Church Street. Uh, Julia and Spiro, thanks for actually coming over and attempting to talk to us. Uh, COVID doesn't make that easy given that you know, people work from home and kids are home. It's just tough. So sorry that we didn't connect before yeah. that. Um, you know, I, I, I really don't have much to say. I feel like it's going to be the same thing you know, like we spoke of before. Um, uh, uh, the only thing I could say um, is that I think my wife and I are in sync on this part when we say that, you know, we want to see your business and you guys succeed. Um, however, we also want to make sure that it is safe. Uh, the only thing, the only comment that we have, that we have is, uh, would be the same thing, the signage, uh, somehow of getting people to not speed through that parking lot. And, um, you know, that's, that's pretty much all I have. Um, other than that, I would, I, I would say that I, you know, hope the commissioner gives you guys whatever you guys are looking for to ensure that you guys succeed here. But uh, that's really what we have for right now. So good night and good luck. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're, and we're working on that stuff, Paul. We'll get, we're going to get it done. All right. Yeah, that, no that triggered a memory from uh, an earlier sort of pre application where we were discussing potentially some traffic calming, either some, yeah. some seasonal speed humps or, or, you know, something temporary that you wouldn't have to get in the way of snow removal or anything like that. But um, yeah, we've been talking with the town. We, we had a meeting with Derek um, and unfortunately because of the brick, we can't really put any sort of speed bumps or speed humps, but we are, we've gotten some signage and we're going to try to, to, to fix that issue just with, you know, getting our customers aware of, how things are supposed to go. Right. Yeah, we're just in the process of getting the correct signage. Uh, with the first round that came in, like I said earlier, just just to make sure that we just kind of tap on this one more time, is that the signs that we got, they just they weren't the right size and they they wouldn't make enough of an impact. So we're just we're just um, reordering new signs and signs uh, that um, will just have the, the the desired result. You know. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes okay. even narrow. Sometimes even narrowing the corridor with like some planters or something like that is enough to, to make people go a couple miles an hour slower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Sorry, uh, was it Paul one four five three? Did you have uh, something further? Uh, well, you know, like I said, nothing further from us. I mean, anything else that would be needed uh, where. Uh, we're concerned. I think we could, uh, my wife and I will be happy to approach Julian Spear and we could talk about that. That's more of a neighborly issue than something that needs to be spoke, spoken about on this call. So thank you guys. Good luck with everything. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, take care. All right. Over to back up.
Oh, if there's uh, any other comments, anybody else chiming in? Otherwise, I think, uh, I don't know if we're ready to close the hearing. Was that all the correspondence that we had? That's all I'm seeing in the packet that I have here. You had, you had 17 letters. I had all those emails that you yeah. sent. What am I even talking about? I have to open those back up again. I, if you want me, I'll go I'll go through them real quick. That, that would be wonderful. I forgot all of those. <laughs> I, I have them right here. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll crank through them. So we have, um, these are all actually letters of support. So uh, we yeah. have from Beth Riley, Dawn Silver, Gail Spader, uh, 388 Church, uh, Jason Silver, 839 Knott Street, um, Jessica Barton, uh, 431 Church Street, uh, Kate Hanley, 34 Dorchester, Kelly Kamei, Kamei, if I'm pronouncing that right, I don't think there's an address here. Um, Jack McConnell um, and Jack is at 182 Broad Street. Uh, Paul Montaneri, I think you uh, know that name. Um, Russ Morin, 495 Brimfield Road, I think you know that name. Uh, Patty Mori Moritko, I'm sorry if I uh, mispronounce that, 33 Mayfield Road. Uh, Norman Cavoli, 14 Center Street, Sarah Piers, 145 Broad, Rachel Novak, 334 Ridge, uh, Rosalind Bravo Cavoli, I don't think there's an address uh, here, um, Sarah Gantley, uh, 16 The Cartway, Susan Barton at 55 Main, I think that uh, covers all of those that I've received anyway. And they were uh, forwarded uh, to all of the commission members as a packet uh, this afternoon. So I was waiting to the last, uh, they kept coming in every day. So I waited to the last minute so we didn't have to send you 17 separate emails. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. All right, with that, uh, do I hear a motion to close? So made, Mr. Chairman, George. And I'll second that. So, um, oh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, all right, so with that, um, any further commission discussion? So we talked about there's just the traffic is the only, or sorry, the traffic, I'm thinking of the last application. So just the parking. Um, I mean, we can, we can discuss potentially the, the traffic calming up in the other area, but I don't know if that's necessarily related to this specifically, or if we would wait for that to be like a, uh, more of a, like a site plan review once that, once that starts to happen or. Yeah, that was a previous condition from the, um, last approval, which involved the liquor. Part. Okay. So we would. I don't, I don't remember that being a, a condition of that. So that's, so we, we can. We can leave that. We can leave that. Yep. So it's really, uh, are, are we trying to uh, make a motion to approve this without any? So the, the motion should just uh, reflect the fact that they are asking for um, permission uh, to apply the flexible uh, parking standards um, of section 6.2, which is uh, our village business district um, uh, offsite parking provision. So the Motion just just for the record should reflect that you're granting uh, relief under those provisions, um, so that it's clear that they're uh, getting um, relief from the normal parking standard that's uh, was illustrated in their in the packet of information. So they're they're um, in, in that number, and but you have the authority um, based on um, the regulations and the testimony by the applicant that included the use of the uh, first church parking and the uh, public parking available on uh, uh, Main Street and the surrounding streets. Motion made Mr. Chairman to approve with the conditions laid down by Peter Gillespie. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. 
When you're going to start the work? Tomorrow. <laughs> he, he's like, he always chimes in with that last question. He's just like, when, when do I get to tomorrow. eat a sandwich? Good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank Everybody you wants, very much. You know, some novels, <laughs> letters and memos and everything we got. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we. I, I saw a lot of those letters and there's some tears that I'm holding back right now because it feels good. You're, I saw, you're I saw so many I forgot about. It. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it so much. We appreciate all of you taking your time. You know, it's late and thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Congrats. Especially during COVID time. It's uh, excellent what you're doing. Thank, right. you. thank you. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying really hard. <laughs> Thanks to Jeff and Breck, even though you had to just sit here and watch. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I wanted to give him a chance to talk, but you know. we were just here as backup. <laughs> Thank you. We would have just uh, added confusion to the whole thing, so stayed in the background. Yeah. But thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to hand the reins back over to the actual Commissioner Roberts. Yeah, I've been moving from room to room looking for better internet. I saw that you were in a different room. You came in a little clearer. It's nice. Yeah, I'm in, yeah, I'm in the house now. <laughs> oh, okay. Rich, we need to get you some 5G down in that neighborhood of yours. Seriously. Yeah, really. A better dial up. Um, do we have any other business? Nope. Okay. Um, the minutes we got them today. I don't know. Has anybody had a chance to look at them? I haven't. That doesn't mean anything. Somebody wants to make a motion or something. You know? No, I haven't motion. looked at them either. Let's table it and we'll, we'll put it in the next packet. Okay. Okay. Uh, staff reports. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's an, anything. Um, extremely noteworthy um uh, we do have a we do we, we do have a uh, only one application at the next meeting and it, all it is is an accessory structure but the the gentleman is um eager to get the approval and and uh he's already ordered the structure so i would i would have normally pushed it out till after the new after the holidays but so you only have one um item for your next meeting, but unfortunately, the applicant wants to uh, wants to stay on the schedule. You will have a couple more at the first meeting in January. Okay, thanks, uh, George. George, um, somebody said there's another restaurant that's going to be going into the Borden. And then my other question is, what is you heard from Chase on the about the corner of Mill Street? Yeah, we're waiting for Chase to start. We've, um, uh, the chairman um, signed the Mylars and they've been filed. So um, I'm not sure. They may have uh, decided to hold off now that the winter is approaching, but um, they haven't indicated officially that they're not going to move forward. So, um, and um, I can neither confirm nor deny your uh, inquiry about the board. Well, it's just somebody brought it up to me today, and I, I don't didn't want, know what I don't want to jinx anything, so I'm not going to. Not I don't going blame to you. No. Only if you know. You mean you mean we could have two Popeyes in town? No. Well, I can I can uh, confirm that it is not a Popeyes. Okay, well that's good. Oh. It's at least got to be a drive-through, so we we got it. We're good. <laughs> How's the corner of Middletown Ave and? Uh, with the restaurant issue and uh, and our town engineer's issue with the traffic matters out on Maple. Uh, I haven't heard anything on that, so I'm not sure it's a... Nothing more. And nothing I'm not more. sure it's, it was unanticipated anyway, so um, no, it's been quiet. Um, the uh, That developer is just finishing up the, um, the, the former pet supply up on the uh, Berlin Turnpike, so that's wrapping yeah. up now. Okay. So once that's done, he um, may refocus on other things. So, yeah, that that building looks really good. Hey, they did a nice job on that. All without our help. 
Uh, no, we did. Um, a recent help, I mean. Well, we did help with the facade program on that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Which building is that? The old uh, pet supply up it's on the Berlin Turnpike. Uh, it's, I think it's 1733 Berlin Turnpike. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I would say it's next to the gas station, but that doesn't narrow it down any. No. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I'll have to check it out. Um, speaking of, of pets and, and quiet, any feedback on some of the neighbors by the um, the, the doggy Dog daycare and the wall that that we had them put in? I have not heard from the neighbors. Uh, not That's not to say that the uh, animal control uh, officer. A lot of those complaints were going directly to the police department, but I haven't seen any of that recently. The fence, okay. it, the fence um, is materially completed. The, the uh, sound engineer um, required that they make additional um, improvements to meet his specifications. Um, so they were working, they had to order some more material um, I was just thinking about that today. So um, they were trying to get them to wrap that up before the snow flied. Mm. In the winter. So hopefully that will still happen. Obviously, we had originally hoped to have this in the, done in the spring, but um, the, I've asked the building inspector to go out there and do a, a formal inspection. Uh, he's down a couple of staff people, so he probably hasn't gotten to it yet. But um, I, yeah, I, I think um, hopefully it's related that you know now that they're finished it's actually effective and they're not we're not getting the complaints but i cannot say that just yet we uh, we did require a report from the sound engineer in order to close this out based on his inspection so hopefully we'll see that shortly and who is that sound engineer is it their consultant their sound engineer that they hired yes okay. yeah so we we required um a certified report from him with his Stamp and seal. Okay. Yep. Good. Uh, public comments. I don't see any public correspondence. Nothing. And the one eighteen two brook for the next meeting. Is there anything else anybody wants to discuss before we adjourn? Just one other thing. We 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 will likely be losing our. Uh, uh, very qualified recording uh, secretary uh, in the very near future. Oh, yeah. no. I'm sorry. So if anyone uh, knows of anyone who might be interested in some part-time, you know, hours of uh, preparing minutes and attending these uh, fascinating <laughs> meetings and conversations, please, um, please send them uh, my way. Um, so we will be looking uh, for somebody to fill uh Julie's uh, shoes. So um, just wanted you to be aware of that. So she's going to hang in there until we find find somebody, but uh, she's now working full time. So she doesn't have the time that okay. she had before. Well, Julie's the best. She's yeah. the best on these meetings. Minute. It was good. Like, you're right. And it, it's not because of George. So I just want. So, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I, I'll go up to my neighbor, Ellen, up the street and ask if she wants to come back to us. There you go. And she'll say, no, you're crazy. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can get Phyllis to come back. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> OK, anything else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion so made. All right. I'll, I'll be the second. That's fine. OK. <laughs> second by Ryan. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Thanks very much. Have so long, everyone. Hang Thanks, up. everybody. Have a bye. wonderful night. Take yep. care. Too. Have a good night. Bye. Best wishes, all. Yeah. Merry Christmas. We don't see you.